Hi there, good evening. Welcome to Deadline Day, the countdown with just three hours to go down until the transfer window closes. We are joined tonight by Clinton Morrison, by Chris Boyd, by Sue Smith and Michael Dawson. He's going to be watching the big game in the Premier League tonight. Yes, there's action as well as transfers. Manchester United Leicester uh, is just kicking off right now. And United have broken a record today for the most expensive signing in transfer deadline day history. We will hear from their new Brazil forward. He's in at last, Anthony. Jurgen Klopp called for midfield reinforcements at Liverpool and it looks like he's got his wish this evening. We'll be live shortly to Anfield. And will Arsenal be able to prize Douglas Luiz away from Aston Villa? as the transfer window enters its final stretch. Yeah, we'll let you know how it started at the King Power very shortly, but we start tonight with Chelsea. Plenty happening for them this evening. They are racing to sign both Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang from Barcelona and Denis Zakaria, the midfielder, from Juventus. Let's get to Stamford Bridge and speak to Michael Bridge, who can tell us what's happening with both. Hi, Michael. Hi Jules, yes, it's a double deadline day for delight for Chelsea Football Club. I understand Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has landed ahead of his move from Barcelona to Chelsea. We reported earlier that terms were agreed between Chelsea and Barcelona. Personal terms were not a problem and Chelsea and Barcelona eventually agreed a fee of around £10 million plus Marcus Alonso. Now, Thomas Tuchel has wanted an out-and-out -out striker for some time and he's finally got his man. I think it's around a two-year deal with an option of a third. It's not been the greatest starts for Chelsea, losing at Southampton the other night. So they've wanted a Bamingang for a few weeks now. But as we say, personal terms not expected to be a problem. He's done, well at, he's done well at Barcelona. 11 goals in 18 games and despite all their well-publicised financial issues, they weren't that keen on selling him. But with Robert Lewandowski uh, playing so well and he's, he's a new hero, he's a star there, uh, he is going to come back to London. But the West London, not North London, and it, what a game that'll be when Arsenal play Chelsea on the 29th of April. What reception will he get? when he returns to the Emirates Stadium. Then in the last couple of hours, we know Chelsea wanted a central midfielder as well. And it looks like they've got one in Dennis Sicaria on a season-long loan deal from Juventus. He's having a medical in Turin as we speak. Personal terms, again, aren't expected to be a problem. And he wants to make this move. He's only played 11 games since his move from a Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's been in and out of the side as well. But speaking to a colleague in Italy, he says he's got a fantastic work rate. Aggressive, naturally fit, just needs a long run of games. Will he get that at Chelsea? We'll wait and see. Although Thomas Tuchel did say the other day they are short in midfield as well. He's got a few injuries there, including N'Golo Kante. But more when we get it. Two deals very close for Chelsea. And I must say, Jules, four fantastic guests in the studio tonight to talk Chelsea. Well, it's got to be on deadline day, hasn't it, really, Michael? Thanks very much indeed. That, of course, is subjective. <laughs> uh, we will talk about Aubameyang in just a moment. Zakara as well. Clinton seems to be giving the thumbs up to that signing, Chelsea fans. But you'll have seen while we were hearing from Michael there, a done deal in the last few minutes, and it's at Aston Villa. Uh, it is Leander Dendonka who has signed from Wolves. The midfielder, not a long journey then from uh, Wolves to Villa Park. It's an undisclosed fee, say Villa. The question is, is the Belgium international going to be a replacement for Douglas Luiz, who we know that Arsenal are chasing or is in addition to the squad. Either way, Dendonka is in at Villa Park and it is an undisclosed fee for the Belgian international. We'll have more on that uh, as we get to it. But we must get to these two big signings at Chelsea. Uh, let's talk about them. Uh, I want to start with Dennis Sakari. I'll come to Aubameyang in a minute. You, you were nodding approval there, Clinton. No, he's a good player. I've seen him play a lot in international football. And I think it's what Chelsea need. They have a few injuries in that midfield area with um, Angolo Kante, but he breaks up attack. Listen, he's not spectacular, going to go and beat people like Kovacic and the likes of Mason Mount, but he's strong, he's aggressive. I think it's a good, a good loan signing because you want bodies through the door. You do want bodies because Chelsea do pick up a lot of injuries in that midfield area. So for me, Sakari's a good signing and he's got good pedigree. For, I think it'll be a good signing. They'll be very surprised by it. Mm. Not always right, though, Jules. So. No, I know you're not. No, but sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Clarify that, yeah. <laughs> um, Chris, 
Aubameyang, we knew that Chelsea needed a striker. It's not done yet, but it looks like it's close. Is he the answer? Well, it's going to have to be, um, you know, because it seems to be only shown town for Chelsea. We've not really, you know, seen or heard them being linked with with anyone else. Um, you know, Aubameyang has been the one that's been mentioned for the, the last few weeks. Um, I just, I, you know, you've got to look at it and, and ask yourself the question of why have Chelsea got themselves into this scenario as such where, I mean, Aubameyang's a fantastic player, done really well at Arsenal. Um, as Bridget touched on there, I think his record at Barcelona um, is, is OK, um, considering the amount of games he's played. Um, yeah, he's 33, but, you know, he looks as if he's in good shape and he, he will um, contribute in that. But you look at Chelsea and think to yourself, whether well, going and spending the money they've spent elsewhere, um, Cucurella, they probably paid another £10 million for what Brighton were looking for at the start. Um, for Fana, when you look at that deal as well. But everybody speaks about how important a striker is. And uh, Chelsea seem to have left it to the last minute to go and get a Bamiyang. But I will say to back them up, there's not really loads of strikers out there that you, you, know, you could quite easily have said, oh, I'll take him as such. Mm. I mean... Once they get the Bamiyang in and all the add-ons for all the various deals they've made this summer, it's going to take them to about £280 million spent this summer. Tuchel so can't say he hasn't been backed, can you say? <laughs> Not at all, no. And I think that's the thing. They've, they've obviously had change off the field, haven't they, with the, the yeah. new owners coming in, change on the field in terms of trying to rebuild, really rebuild the, the defence. Rudiger out, Christensen out, bringing in Fafana, Koulibaly. And then, like you mentioned, Kukurea, Sterling, I think, fantastic signing. The Aubameyang situation, I think he'll, I think it'll be a, a good short-term fix yes. for, for Chelsea. He knows the league. Thomas Tuchel knows him well, so he'll know how to get the best out of him. Um, and then you look at the midfielder, that was somewhere else that they needed strength and because of, of injuries and, and things like that. So um, he's certainly been backed. Does that then add pressure? Probably does, doesn't it, to, to go out and, and be successful, challenging for title, challenging for, for trophies. So, um, certainly been back, though. Joe, was it, you know what, sorry, but it's good business, you know. What, they, they needed to do this, though, because that result in midweek, he wasn't happy about the result, obviously, against um, Southampton. So they were soft, didn't they? They were soft. Yeah. He's saying that, and you don't like that when the manager comes, and sometimes he needs to look at himself because he keeps um, chopping and changing the team, and sometimes he doesn't know his best 11. At the start of the season, he played Chilwell. Then he's took Chilwell out, and because he's brought in Cucurella, he's not been playing Chilwell. They've signed for Fana now. I think for Fana's a good signing. It's a lot of money. He has to hit the ground running. So I think the business, they needed to do it because, and they needed to bring in a Batman. I don't know if you agree with me, Boydie, because you can't just be relying on Sterling. He's started oh, the season yeah. fantastic I, 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 I'll agree with what you're saying because I don't mm. think in mean, a club of Chelsea they're going to be deep into the majority yeah, of tournaments yeah. that they're involved in and let's be realistic Sterling has played as a striker yeah. but he's not an out and out striker no, no. Kai Havertz has played as a striker but he's not an out and out striker mm, yeah. I mean as it stands right now Chelsea don't really I mean the Brozier yeah. young uh, yeah. boy but I mean again I, the, the, it would maybe be a little slight concern for me as, a, as if I, you know, if I was a Chelsea fan, that the fact that it looks as if Billy Gilmore's going to leave, yeah. Conor Gallagher's going to leave, Manda Brogia doesn't seem to be getting the game time. So, is it, as Sue said there, is it just a case of short term, let's get success? Because, but you can understand why that is the case, because Chelsea chop and change their managers all the time. So, get the players in that's going to get me success this season, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, just to finally finish on Aubameyang, um, obviously he's, he's out for a few weeks after this awful attack that happened uh, at his house. Um, so, a few weeks out, could be back in action by the end of October. Date for your diary, the Arsenal game. November the 5th, could be fireworks, <laughs> couldn't they? Uh, Mikel Arteta reunited with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Right, let's see what's happening, shall we? Away from all the transfers in this, what's a really big game in the Premier League tonight? Leicester against Manchester United. We'll talk about their transfer dealings for both clubs shortly. Uh, Michael Dawson, about 10 minutes gone in this one. Leicester bottom looking for a first win. Manchester United looking for uh, three wins in a row. How's it started? Yeah, they've started OK, Leicester. They're, they're beat, making themselves hard to break down. Mate. Everyone behind the ball and you see how they've set up. And Didi playing in the in the back four, that's that's the signing that they're going to make. Uh, I mean, they've just brought Wout Face in, 15 million young centre half. They needed improvements there. They had to. You see, Fafana's gone out the door. Oh, Tillemans is he's just making a foul on on Bruno Fernandes there. He's he, clearly not going out the door. He's clearly not going out the yeah. door. Also, Cristiano Ronaldo, who's on the bench for Manchester United, he he's not going out the door neither. Same team for for Manchester United who who beat Southampton at the weekend. Um, but Leicester will be delighted the way it started. Manchester United just had two crosses that defended 
defended well from Christian Eriksen into the corner, but Leicester will be delighted with the start of the game. Yeah, I think we knew the moment we saw that uh, Ronaldo was on the team bus earlier on that he would be going nowhere, and that was sort of uh, confirmed anyway by Ten Hag yesterday. Madison and Tiedemann's both starting for Leicester, so that tells you they are staying as well for the rest of the, the, uh, the summer, at least through to January. Let's talk about Manchester United and the fact that Ronaldo is staying put. Um, you're all trying to focus on that as well as the, the transfers. That's understandable. It's a better goal than a win, would you? <laughs> I can feel like four sets of ice. <laughs> um, Ronaldo, Sue, let's start with you. Staying till January at least now. We know that, maybe reluctantly. Um, how do you see the next few months panning out for him? It's a difficult situation, isn't it, for, for Ten Hag? You've got a player there that, first of all, asked to leave. Then he stayed. Obviously, Ten Hag made the big decision in, in leaving him out as well as Harry Maguire, which turned out to be the, the right decision. You've now got a you know, brilliant player, a world-class player for so many years. Is he going to be happy to, to sit on the bench? That's going to be difficult to, to keep a player like that happy. Will he be happy to be an impact sub coming on? So it's a, it's a difficult situation for, for Ten Hag. He'll be hoping that he can deal with that and, and handle that situation. Um, but the players that they've brought in, I know Manchester United have been criticised, haven't they, with their it's like a scattergun approach in terms of bringing all these different players in. When you look at some of the players they brought in, decent players, you know, really good players. Um, Anthony, a lot of money, really big pressure on his shoulders. Young man, Ten Hag obviously knows him, thinks that he can develop him further because he's obviously worked with him before. So for Ronaldo... Is he going to be happy sitting on the bench? That, that's my only sort of concern. I think he will be. You know, I, I know there'll be changed him, but I don't think he's one for... Yes, maybe contradict myself here. He obviously tried to force a move. It didn't happen. I don't think he's going to be one that will spit the dummy out and refuse to play and stuff like that between now and... Because he's got a World Cup to, come, to, to look forward to. He's obviously... If he is going to try and move in the January window, you don't want to go through a period of time where you're, um, you're not playing. I think there's one thing that he's going to have to accept, mm. that he will be on the bench a few times. But when you do come to the end of your career, it's something that's very difficult to accept, basically. Because yeah, you always think you're still the player that you were. Too well last year, though, did he, when he got brought off? Yeah, it was against Brentford when he was... And I said when he came through the door last year, what a signing. But you're going to have to realise you're getting older. Yeah. You don't play as much football, so you have to accept that. And it, I just think Cristiano Mate, Ronaldo... I'm, we, we're discussing this. You might be watching this. <laughs> Sorry, I was too busy. No, no, no. Legion, those can get involved. <laughs> he, 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 he made a very good point there. He is right, but it's difficult because... You, when you get older, you do, you do have to sit on the bench. But it's Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. He's got that aura about him where he shouldn't be on the bench. I'm one of the best players there ever is. And, but it does get a time where Man United are playing different games. Like when they played Liverpool, they press from the front and cause them all kinds of problems. That's not Ronaldo's game now. But he, you can't never sleep on Ronaldo because he did score that he much goals. He'll, he'll, he'll play games, games and he'll score goals. He scored a lot of goals last season. His goals return last season was outstanding. He's a world-class player. He's still one of the best there is and there will ever be. He will score goals. I think it's good that Man United have kept him. They needed to keep him. Because if you did let him go, that Anthony, they spent a lot of money. He's not a centre-forward. He's a wide man. He's going to be competing with the likes of Rashford and Sancho. So it's a good business to keep Ronaldo. I know... I know I know he didn't want to stay, but it's still good business. Yeah, and do you know against Southampton as well? He yeah. was the one that was like cheering from the sidelines. You go. He was as soon as Fernando scored, he yeah. went over and celebrated. So hopefully he's got that sort of unity there as well. Uh, well, you mentioned Anthony there. Let's hear from him, shall we? Because uh, he has become the most expensive deadline day signing ever. Uh, it's been probably on for weeks, hasn't it? But finally, he's been reunited with Eric Ten Hag, and he's been speaking about teaming up once again with the Dutchman. Olha, o Eric Terhag é um, um treinador excelente, que eu tenho muito respeito e muito carinho. Desde a minha chegada é, no Ajax, ele, ele me tratou super bem, me deu total confiança. E não foi à toa que em dois anos eu tive uma sequência muito boa com ele de jogos. E a gente criou essa confiança, essa intimidade. Então, é um treinador que eu tenho muito respeito, muito carinho. Desde quando ele estava lá, eu soube da vinda dele para cá. É, desejei muita, muita sorte para ele. Todo sucesso, que é uma pessoa que merece muito. E agora, do lado dele, novamente, espero é, fazer história e crescer cada vez mais junto com ele. Well, he's in the door finally. Eric Ten Hag went, and United too, went all out to get him. He really wanted him. They spent a lot of money for him, 80 million uh, pounds. How much expectation is on his shoulders now because of that fee, because of the length of time they've, yeah. they've tried to get him? It's huge, and, and like I say, it's, it's somebody that Ten Hag's clearly wanted. He's, he's gone out for him. Like I say, he's worked with him before, so he knows him. He knows what, what his abilities are. He thinks that he can develop him even further because he is a, a young man. He's somebody that 
is going to get fans off their seat because of, of the qualities that he has. So it's an exciting prospect, but it's just the pressure and the expectation. And, and you just hope that he is somebody that, that can cope with that. You hope that, I suppose, that the fans will give him time to, to adapt to the Premier League and adapt to his, his teammates. But without a doubt, he's a, he's a great prospect, but it's just a lot of money on a, a young player's shoulders. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it is a lot of money, but, you know, Manchester United have been criticised in the past for going and getting the elite as such at that moment in time and paying over the top for them. When you think of Pogba, when you think of Lukaku, and it didn't work out, I mean, you, you kind of you kind of get the feeling that Manchester United need to get players that have got a little bit of fire in their belly, you know, and they have to prove that, you know, I'm here for a reason. Listen, for Anthony, he's a, that's not in his control what somebody's want to pay for him or what Ajax want from him. Um, he'll just be concentrating on getting himself in the training ground, getting himself ready to play games of football, and then, you know, he'll be hoping that he can show why they've spent that money. But I think it would be unfair to, you know, to, to criticise or to judge him on the transfer alone because, as I said, he's got nothing to do with that, really. Um, and when you think of the business that Manchester United have done in the past, um, you know, the, the big names they've brought in, there's a lot of them failed. Uh, we will come back to Manchester United uh, shortly and throughout the evening, no doubt. But uh, we are keeping our eyes on what's happening with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. He used to be in North London. His new home is going to be West London with Chelsea. He's arrived in the capital and our man Gary Cotterill has managed to catch up with him. Yeah, Pierre, welcome back to London. Looking forward to the challenge? For well, sure. <laughs> Great to be back in the Premier League. Yeah, back, back. <laughs> well, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you. Linking up again with Thomas Tuchel as well. That's nice, though. <laughs> I think you've got a lot to offer. Yes, for sure. I, Chelsea I will need you. <laughs> Uh, his mind did a pretty good job of trying to block the pitch there, didn't he? But you got a glimpse of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. You maybe just about heard a few short answers from him to Gary Cottrell as he arrives there for his medical. Where are we? Quarter past eight now. Uh, is it a race against time? Will Chelsea get this over the line by the 11 o'clock deadline? They will certainly be hoping so, and we are there, and we'll bring you the news as soon as we have it. Two hours, 42 minutes, 26 seconds left of this summer transfer window, and next one across live to Anfield. Jurgen Klopp wants a new midfielder. Is he going to get one? Stay with us to find out.
Uh, we're going to get to Liverpool very shortly, see what's happening with their search for a new midfielder. But there's just been a goal in the one Premier League game tonight. Bottom of the table, Leicester still winless, taking on Manchester United, who have picked things up in recent games. Who's got the first goal of the night, Michael Dawson? Gone to, gone to Manchester United. Jaden Sancho. Rodgers looks like he's looking at VAR. He's not happy here. Let's run the, on the attack and then the break away. Indeed, he's in charge of the ball. He goes to play it back to, to Danny Ward. He clears the ball a long way up the field. I'm watching it in replay here. I don't know what they're looking at. Maybe they think Sancho is still offside. He goes the 3v2. Fernandes picks the ball up. Nothing wrong here. It goes into Rashford. He's well onside. It's a great little pass. It goes in. Danny Ward comes out. Sancho takes a great touch. Takes it past him. Into the open net. 1-0 Manchester United, not too sure what Brendan Rodgers is looking at. They, are, they have nothing to look at. 1-0 Manchester United. Uh, they've won the last two, haven't won three in a row in the Premier League since December, but Manchester United in front at the King Power Stadium. It just goes from bad to worse, doesn't it, for Leicester and Brendan Rodgers. Just one point from their first four games this season. Last time they started that badly, 2003. They were relegated. We'll talk about Leicester and their summer uh, a little bit later on. But I promise you we go to Liverpool and find out what's happening. We know that they need a new midfielder. Klopp's admitted he, he needs a new midfielder and they might have one very shortly. Vinny O'Connor uh, is there for us to tell us what's happening. Yes, Arthur has signed his Liverpool contract. That's come from our chief reporter, Carve Solical. Some detail behind that deal as well. We understand it's a loan with no options. The wages will be split between the clubs, with Liverpool paying the majority of his wages. Three other clubs wanted Arthur as well, but he was only going to go to Liverpool when they came in for him. He wants to play at the highest level in order to be in the Brazil World Cup squad. He has been in the Brazil preliminary 30-man squad list, of course, as well. No official confirmation from Liverpool as yet. We expect that that's not too far away. But as you say, Jules, Liverpool have got their man and bolstered. Uh, it's been a much-needed reinforcement being brought in as well to bolster that midfield area and as I say we expect uh, confirmation, official confirmation uh, from Liverpool in the not too distant future OK Vinny thanks very much indeed, back to you once we have that confirmation let, let's see what our, our guests think Clinton, uh, did they need a new midfielder? Yeah they needed a new midfielder because all the injuries they had and they picked up a lot, um, a lot of injuries up They've got a lot of pressure on young Elliot, who's obviously um, he's been very good over the last couple of games, and he needed that create. He's not creative though, Arthur. He's more of a holding midfielder. He's not one of those who's going to pick a pass like Thiago. So it would be surprised to see where he plays because Fabinho does that job ever so well. But he's got good pedigree. You don't play for Barcelona or Juventus if you're not a good footballer. So I think it's a good bit of business for Liverpool. He's an exciting arm player, and yeah, they needed a midfielder just because of the injuries they had. So I think good business there done by Liverpool. Yeah, Jordan Henderson, the latest to suffer an injury uh, last yeah. night, wasn't it? So, I mean, I think that was the move that really triggered them yeah. uh, into action today, Chris. Yeah, but I think, I think in fact, it was actually me and Sue touched on it on, on, uh, on Saturday as well, regarding, you know, they've been exposed in the full-back areas because of that, you know, midfielder, that holding midfielder, whether it's Fabinho, who's the normal one, um, has, has been missing, um, you know, so for Arthur to come in there and, and um, it's another body in the building, you know, James Milner, fantastic professional um, and he's, he will always do a job, there's no doubt about that, but you feel as if, you know, it's getting to the, the latter stages. Tiago's been injured. But, you know, Tiago, he seems to pick up a lot of little niggle injuries yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that keeps him out of the team. So, I mean, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity for Arthur to come in. Um, he's obviously come from good stock in uh, Brazil, but then you're looking at, you know, his last two clubs, Barcelona and Juventus, it doesn't yeah. get much bigger than that. And um, it's an opportunity for him to come in. Well, for his point of view, hopefully play football, but he's going to have to start well because if you don't, um, Thiago and that will be coming back. So yeah. you're going to have to start well. Yeah, and you mentioned Barcelona and Juventus there. You know, there's big reputation he's got, but the perception is that he maybe hasn't yet fulfilled his potential under Jurgen Klopp. Could he do that? It's an opportunity to do that, and that's what you see, don't you, with, with players when they go to Liverpool. You do see Jurgen Klopp able to, to develop them and, and make those players even better. So he, he'll probably be looking at that as well. And, and like you say, he's an experienced player. He, he can play, like you say, he's more of that, that holding the field role, but he can play a little bit further forward if you need him to. So he's got that versatility in there. Um, but it was, it was an area that initially Jurgen Klopp said, we don't need any cover. But then, obviously, as the injury started to mount up, John Henderson picking up the injury last night, he had to do that. He had to bring someone in. Because you, you, you would think, again, is this another short term? Yeah. In the long term, are they looking at someone like mm. Jude Bellingham? Um, but that obviously hasn't happened in, in this window. So it's certainly a, you know, a quality player, an experienced player that can come in and, and certainly do a, a job for Liverpool.
Uh, so a new midfielder is uh, en route to Liverpool. Let's um, go across Merseyside to the blue side. A midfielder has been an area that Frank Lampard's been looking at, amongst others. Let's find out what's happening uh, across the road at Goodison Park with two and a half hours to go or so. Alan Irwin. Yeah, Everton's uh, desire to bring in another striker in addition to Neil Mopé remains. He was brought in last week, but uh, the links with Ben Brereton Diaz do remain this evening and inquiries have been made by Everton. He wasn't their number one uh, priority in the first instance by any stretch and my understanding is that the clubs are still way apart in terms of valuation for the player. I think Blackburn are looking for a fee of around about 15 to £20 million pounds, and Everton really won't go to that amount. So as it stands, uh, that deal won't happen, but uh, never say never, of course, on deadline day. A couple of deals that uh, are... Still in the offing, while one has been completed around about quarter to five today, Idrissa Garnagay made the return to Everton after three years away, left in 2019. They've got him back at a price of just £2 million for the 32-year-old, a very popular fans when he was at the club previously. James Garner from Manchester United is another. He was in the building around about three hours ago, still here, finalising the terms and conditions. Uh, we have seen uh, Everton's chief executive officer, Denise Barrett-Baxendale, leave just yes, shortly, but sure plenty are still that. in there to try and sort that out for Everton. We expect James Garner, the 21-year-old from Manchester United, to sign on the dotted line before the deadline closes at 11 o'clock. Alan, thanks for now. So that would be two midfielders in Everton and potentially a striker as well. Ben Brereton and Diaz, we'll see if that materialises. Fulham have been keen as well, haven't they? One bit of news to bring you from the continent. AC Milan have just confirmed uh, Serginio Dest has joined them on loan. This is a man who was uh, interesting Manchester United, but it's uh, is AC Milan who've got Dest on loan with an option to buy. Uh, he is in to Milan from Barcelona. Uh, coming up after the break, the latest on Chelsea's pursuit of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. We brought you those exclusive pictures a short time ago. He is in London having his medical.
Welcome back to Sky Sports News. Of course, transfers have been dominating our coverage today, but we are just going to break off to talk about something a lot more serious. The floods in Pakistan have killed more than 1,000 people and affected more than 30 million people. Now an urgent appeal has been launched by the Disasters Emergency Committee. Pakistan has been devastated by brutal floods, unlike any the country has suffered before. Lives and livelihoods swept away in moments, and more than a thousand people killed so far. Millions more lives are at risk, and the people of Pakistan need our help to survive. Thirty million people have been impacted. More than a million homes have been destroyed or damaged, leaving families homeless. Six million people, including women and children, are in desperate need right now, lacking clean water, food, shelter, medical assistance, and sanitation. One third of this country is now underwater the equivalent of the whole of the UK being submerged. The UN says this is climate change, which has struck some of the world's most vulnerable, destroying their entire communities and neighborhoods. And as rains continue, the crisis and risk of disease is expected to get worse. <laughs> Disasters emergency committee charities and local partners are on the ground, but urgently need more resources to help. You can help by donating online at dec.org.uk by calling 0330-678-1000 by texting SKY to 7000 to give £10 or by sending a cheque to this address. £10 will pay for hygiene supplies for two people. £50 provide emergency shelter for two families and 100 pounds means emergency food for two families for a month. Whatever you are able to manage, please donate now. We can make a difference and save lives. So plenty of ways to donate then. Funds are desperately needed. More information is available on the Disasters Emergency Committee website. You can find that at www.dec.org.uk and also on the Sky Sports website. Here on Sky Sports News, let's turn our attention uh, shortly back to the transfers, but now to the night's big Premier League game. It's Leicester against Manchester United. Michael Dawson is watching it for us. He saw Jadon Sancho put United in front. How much of a threat are Leicester carrying at the other end, Michael? Not a lot at all, Jules. They really, really are, and they're getting everyone behind the ball. As Barnes just puts one past the post, he's been the bright spot. He's actually got Dallow booked. Dallow is on a, on a yellow card because when he gets it, Lise is positive. End product's not been great. I think we've had one shot on, on target. It's been all Manchester United, really, but he just has an unbelievable attempt there. He comes in off the line, takes a touch. He takes it on his right foot and he sends it. David De Gea is looking over the... Oh, yeah, Brendan Rodgers claps. It was first little good bit of play from Leicester. But at the other end, Marcus Rashford has been very, very sharp, very bright. Leicester's trying to push forward, but guess what happens when that happens? The space is in behind. You can't give Marcus Rashford space. He's just had a great little ball. Again, Bruno Fernandes into him. He gets to the byline and he pulls it back to Sancho. Good bit of defending by James Justin. Luckily, he gets a block in. But Manchester United are pretty comfortable, Jules. Uh, United comfortable there. Two hours, 22 minutes left of this transfer window. Lots still to happen tonight. Lots of deals in the making. We're across them all. Let's just remind you that the breaking news that we brought you in the last hour, that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has arrived in London ahead of securing his move to Chelsea tonight. Our reporter, Gary Cotterell, was there 
to greet him. Yeah, Pierre, welcome back to London. Hello. Looking forward to the challenge? For well, sure. <laughs> Great to be back in the Premier League. Yeah, back, back. <laughs> well, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you. Linking up again with Thomas Tuchel as well. That's nice, though. <laughs> I think you've got a lot to offer. Yes, for sure. I Chelsea I need you. <laughs> So, oh, very good. Yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> well, if it doesn't work out in the fun tree, you've got a job as a minder then for Pierre and for Bamiang. That's, that's good to know, isn't it? <laughs> Um, well, listen, as well as the guests here in the studio following all the stories with you uh, this evening, uh, elsewhere in a studio here at Sky Studios, we've got our transfer experts ready to bring you all the latest breaking news. Let's see what is happening. Let's join Bella Shah. Hi, Bella. It is often, but that was sensational from Clinton Morrison. But right, yes, we have got the transfer trio here with me. I've got Darmesh, Melissa and Carve. Right, we saw those shots just there with Gary Cosper. What's the latest with the I Bamiang? prefer Clinton's. <laughs> I prefer Clinton's on Jules. Genius. No, but look, he is now in London. He has landed from that flight in Spain. He, he said goodbye to all of his teammates earlier on today, the Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Deal is all agreed. £10 million plus and Marcus Alonso going the other way. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang coming to Chelsea. Two-year deal, one-year option. Having a medical as we speak. So he's got about two hours now to try and get this all over the line. We don't foresee any issues with this. And he should become a Chelsea player before the deadline. Happy with that one. Right, Melissa, you've got an update on Arthur. Yes, he's just tweeted his gratitude to Juventus. He's changed his location to Liverpool. Oh, we quick. saw him arriving at the club's training complex to complete his deal. That now looks to be done loan, which means it gives Liverpool control and another body in the middle of a park in the park uh, while they source their long-term options moving forward okay and Carve Douglas Louise he's a pretty wanted man wasn't he what's the latest yes uh, just a bit more on uh, Arthur as well actually it's a loan with no option uh, we're being told the wages are going to be split between Juventus and Liverpool Liverpool will pay most of the wages Arthur himself had offers from three other clubs but once Liverpool came in for him there was only one place he was going to go to. We're told it was a unique opportunity that he could not miss. And he wants to play at the highest level to try and get into the Brazil squad uh, at the World Cup. He yeah. has been in some of the preliminary 30-man uh, squads. As far as Douglas Luiz and Arsenal supporters are concerned, we told you a couple of hours ago that Arsenal were willing to pay £23 million for Douglas Luiz. They're now willing to pay £23 million plus £2 million in add-ons. So £25 million in total. Uh, I asked the question, is Douglas Louis still not for sale? I was told Villa are considering the offer. So the position may have just changed a little bit. I don't want to say uh, that Villa's position has officially changed that he's not for sale, but they have in the past hour completed a deal to sign Dendonka. Mm. So maybe will that mean that Villa are considering the offer and Arsenal have got a chance of signing him? Speaking to people involved in the negotiations, they're telling me, look, time is running out. It's getting really, really late if Douglas Luiz is going to move to Arsenal. And if he doesn't move to Arsenal now, of course... He's a free agent next summer, so he can move for nothing next summer. And we know clubs like Juventus, Atletico Madrid, uh, Liverpool and Chelsea were also interested. Just very, very quickly, I've <laughs> just been given a, a message to say that Carlos Vinicius to Fulham is very, very close. He's completed his medical. Um, personal terms have been agreed. It's a £4.25 million deal from Benfica, a permanent deal. So that one should be done very, very soon. And I've just been told that a fee has been agreed for Bubakar Traore with Wolves 
Okay. with Mets, a season-long loan with an €11 million Euro option. Remember, Wolves have sold Leander Dendonka for £13 million to Aston Villa. Looks like they have got their replacement in Bubakar Traore. It's a loan with an €11 million Euro option. The Wolves officials flew this afternoon and they'll be undergoing a medical very, very shortly. So, not long to get that one done, but Wolves no, are reacting to the sale of Dendonka with Bubakar Traore. OK, fantastic. So, it's all moving here. We'll be back with much more... Uh, all of the updates coming from these three. Back to you for now, Jules. Bella, thanks very much indeed. Lots of attention here in the studio on what's happening at the King Power. We'll get another update from Michael shortly. Still Manchester United through Jadon Sancho leading Leicester by a goal to nil. You heard some breaking news there. Lots of it happening. Just to remind you what we told you this hour. The big news from Merseyside at the moment. Arta Mello has signed his Liverpool contract. More next. We'll get the view from Italy. The clock is ticking. Two hours, 12 minutes and 40 seconds left until the transfer window closes. Back to the deals that are happening. Plenty of big ones are bubbling away nicely. We'll get back to them very shortly. But it's half-time in the, uh, the football, the live Premier League game tonight. Leicester against Manchester United. Uh, Manchester United leading by a goal to nil thanks to Jadon Sancho midway through that first half. 
Some boos there from the home fans, Michael. Yeah, and that was just in general play. He was playing from James Justin back to Ndidi to Johnny Evans to Danny Ward. Patient play. I'm thinking there's no need to, for, for that, but he's the unrest in the football club. That, that's the reason, not in that performance. He's been comfortable for Manchester United, but Leicester's performance hasn't deserved for keeping the ball, the boos, in my opinion. Uh, unrest, as you say, at the football club, the bottom of the league. And until today, the only bit of business they've done this summer was to bring in a third-choice goalkeeper on, on a free transfer. They have at least brought in a replacement for Wesley Fofana today in Valt Fars. But, I, Sue, I guess penny the, for the thoughts of Brendan Rodgers. You know, he, he's seen all the clubs that are traditionally around, top half of the table, strengthening this summer. How do you think he's feeling right now? Because they haven't. No, they haven't, and I feel for him. At the end of last season, I, I thought... Are they going to bring more players in? I think Brendan Rodgers was sort of thinking that a bit of a freshen up because sometimes it's just about bringing different voices into a, a dressing room. And then all, obviously the uncertainty around for Fana, was he going to go? Tielemans, was he going to go? Madison, that's, that's a difficult situation to, to try and manage. Obviously losing Schmeichel, big leader, obviously a very good goalkeeper. So you lose him and then Fafana goes and, and that obviously took a long period of time to, to actually go through so you're losing players you're losing key players and, and not bringing enough in so, so I felt for, or I feel for, for Brendan Rodgers it's a difficult situation I understand that you know the pandemic and the financial situation and it's it's been difficult obviously getting players out to then bring players in and it <laughs> Obviously, the Fafana deal was brilliant. You get, you know, a lot of money for him. But then you've only got a short period of time to then try and bring somebody in, which they have done. And you just hope that he can hit the ground running. Mm. Uh, we'll come back to Leicester. We will. But we are going to get the view from Italy now because the transfer window was closed there. And we can give an update from Gianlanco, uh, Gianluca excuse me, Di Marzio, who's in Milan this evening and uh, uh, speaks to us now. Very good evening to you, Gianluca. Uh, now, you broke the news about Denis Zakaria heading to Chelsea. Hi. on loan tonight. Hi there. Uh, what can you tell us about Zakaria? It's going to be a, a close finish, is it, before the deadline? Yes, yes, I think so. Zakaria. Zakaria is the route pronunciation. He finished medicals in Turin and in J Medical when usually uh, the new signing of Juventus come to do the medicals and he, he, he had medicals uh, in Turin to, to leave for Chelsea and he finished I think one hour ago, 40 minutes ago, so just the time now to, to uh, sign the contracts and I think there is time, there is time to finish and to, to have the confirmation, the official confirmation for Zakaria to Chelsea on loan with uh, uh, option to buy. We know uh, that the, the option will be around 30 million of pounds. So I think that uh, till the end of your uh, deadline, uh, Zakaria uh, will be a Chelsea player. Putting me right on the pronunciation there, Zakaria. Um, Gianluca, tell me firstly, why are Juve willing to let him go? And secondly, what type of player are Chelsea getting? I think that Juventus let him uh, go because they signed uh, Pogba, because they signed Paredes uh, two days ago, uh, because they, they have... Uh, Two uh, incredible talent, talented young players, two starlets like Miretti and Fagioli because Locatelli is now uh, Juventus and national team uh, player, very, very strong. They have Rabiot too and you know that Rabiot could, uh, could be a Manchester United player. So now they have a lot of midfielders. Uh, and so I think they, they, they let Zakaria go because uh, uh, in this moment he could have played uh, less. They have McKenney too. Uh, so Zakaria now in, in Chelsea, can, I think he can, he can be a, 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 good, a good midfielder for Chelsea because he's a box-to-box -box player, he's a Premier League player. Uh, and so I think that with uh, Thomas Tuchel, that knows him uh, very well because he played a lot in, uh, in Bundesliga, uh, he can be a good sign for, uh, for Chelsea. In Italy, Jeremy Boga at Atalanta, the winger. I know Leicester wanted him. That deal, though, is off. What happened there? Did the player want the move to the Premier League? Uh, the deal is off, yes, it's correct. Uh, 
The player uh, was not so sure to leave. Atalanta was not so sure to let him go. So yes, there was uh, there was uh, uh, was a day of uh, of uh, phone calls between uh, Leicester uh, and and Atalanta and the player. But then at the end, they decided not to uh, to 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 let the player go. Even if the player now is is not in even in the bench in Atalanta Turin, the match uh, playing now. In, in Italy because he, he was uh, linked with this deal all the day so he's, he, he was not concentrated for the match and, and for this, uh, this deal off uh, Pratt could not uh, have gone to, to Turin because if Leicester had, had bought uh, Boga Pratt uh, could have gone to Turin uh, in this moment uh, uh, Dennis Pratt will, uh, will stay and will remain uh, in Leicester and the other, the other deal of the, of the last minutes in Italy but off now was Olaina to West Ham. West Ham offered to Turin for Olaina four million uh, pounds plus four million of bonus. But uh, Torino wanted more and wanted to have a, sub a substitute before saying yes to West Ham. So the deal collapsed. Gianluca, thank you as always for bringing us up to date with events in Italy. We appreciate it. Gianluca Di Marzio there live in Milan on Sky Sports News tonight. Right, some breaking news to bring you. Number 20 could be coming in at Nottingham Forest. I think it's 20. <laughs> you do lose track a bit this summer. Uh, they're in talks with Chelsea over a potential deal for striker Michi Batshuayi. Uh, understood a loan deal has been discussed by the two clubs tonight. Mike, I'm going to come to you with your Nottingham Forest hat on. Batshuayi to the city ground. What do you think? Wow. Another signing? remarkable it really really is if you ask me to name them and now I'm in big trouble I'll have to get my list out longer than <laughs> go 20, 20 put go, go for it yeah I'd have to go through <laughs> positions it's remarkable it really really is and that's why when I heard that earlier I was thinking wow you've brought Anna Wanyi uh, Emmanuel Dennis you've already got Sam Surridge in the building you've brought Morgan Gibbs White who is a, not a number nine but you still play Brennan Johnson Jesse Lingard wow if he comes in the attacking option they've got the problem Steve Cooper's going to have where do you play them all? How do you keep them all happy? But look, Nottingham Forest have certainly given themselves a fighting chance to stay up more than that. And you look what's happened at other, other clubs that have been promoted. They'd love some of that money to spend. Yes, it looks like it might be a loan if it does go ahead. But wow, a, an experienced player that um, could be interesting. We will keep an eye on that one. Michi Batshuayi, Chelsea and um, Nottingham Forest in talks over a low move for Batshuayi. He was on loan at Crystal Palace last season. We'll try and get Clinton's view on him a little bit later on, but we've got to go to a break. Not before we tell you about another striker who's going to be one of the big headlines tonight. No doubt about it. Just as he was in January when he left the Premier League for Barcelona. Tonight, he's leaving Barcelona for the Premier League. Pierre-Emerick back in London, having his medical at Chelsea.
the Premier League. Yeah, back, back. <laughs> well, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you. Linking up again with Thomas Tuchel as well. That's nice, though. <laughs> it's got a lot to offer. Yes, for sure. Welcome to Deadline Day, the countdown with less than two hours to go now until the transfer window closes. Here in the studio with us tonight, uh, Michael Dawson, Sue Smith, Chris Boyd and Clinton Morrison. Uh, Michael's keeping us across Manchester United away at Leicester in the Premier League. Half time there, United leading 1-0. Soccer special meets Deadline Day for the next hour. United, meanwhile, have broken a record today for the most expensive signing in transfer deadline day history. It's Anthony, the Brazil forward. We will hear from him. Jurgen Klopp called for midfield reinforcements at Liverpool, and it looks like he has got his wish. The very latest live from Anfield coming up. And will Arsenal be able to prize Douglas Luiz away from Aston Villa as the transfer window? enters the home straight. Well, we start with the very latest on Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. He was a big story in January on the final day. He's a big story today on the final day as well. He has arrived in London for a medical with Chelsea. Uh, let's go live now to Gary Cotterell, who was the man who met him as he arrived there. Gary, we saw those pictures of you and uh, Mr Aubameyang's minders. What can you tell us? been a, an exciting long dramatic day hasn't it for lots and lots of people on this uh, deadline day as it always is and of course included in that is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang uh, his movements today well he started off of course in Barcelona he was seen by colleagues of mine who uh, follow his every move follow Barcelona players every move having his hair cut at uh, lunchtime today in Barcelona wanting to look his very best for his new club uh, and then he popped to the training ground uh, the Barcelona training ground uh, this afternoon for about 20 minutes the rest of the team were training this afternoon of course the staff are there as well he went to say goodbye get his stuff and then went to the airport for the short flight relatively short flight over to London and then from London he got in a, a people carrier and came here to this clinic uh, to have the medical now uh, he was due here at seven o'clock he actually arrived here at eight o'clock uh, Mikhail Arteta if you're watching uh, a little bit there for your um, notebook but not even Mikhail could blame him for his time keeping on this occasion because there was bad traffic and then when the driver did arrive he didn't know where to go this clinic has a, an underground car park but he tried to get in the out ramp and the barrier wouldn't open so in the end after driving around a couple of times he gave up and that's why uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang had that 10-15 metre walk into the front door and that's when we tried to have a word with him, despite the best efforts of his security guard. Yeah, Pierre, welcome back to London. Hello. Looking forward to the challenge? For sure. <laughs> Great to be back in the Premier League. Yeah, back, back. <laughs> well, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you. Linking up again with Thomas Tuchel as well. That's nice, though. <laughs> I think you've got a lot to offer. Yes, for sure. I, Chelsea I need you. <laughs> well, he hasn't been playing a lot so far this season. Of course, he picked up that partially broken jaw, didn't he, from intruders who broke into his home in Barcelona. That isn't thought to be any kind of problem as far as Chelsea are concerned, and as far as the examiners in the building behind me are concerned. And it's not the first time he's been involved in a, a deadline day drama. You, you mentioned before that it happened again uh, in January when he went to Barcelona. But remember back in 2018 when there were three players that had to move there was a kind of domino effect before, before any of the deals could happen. Dortmund to Arsenal was a Bamiyang, and then uh, Michibachuai, Chelsea to Dortmund. That had to happen as a result of, of, of that move. And then, of course, Giroud from Arsenal to Chelsea. It's a bit less complicated this time, and it looks like it is all going to get done before the 11 o'clock deadline. He's joining Chelsea. Uh, eight points and eight places behind his former team, Arsenal. It'll be interesting when he does return to the Emirates. I think that's going to be in April. Gary, thanks very much indeed for now. And he's not going to be the only new player in the door at Chelsea tonight. Let's get straight back to Gianluca Di Marzio in Milan. We spoke to him about 15 minutes ago uh, about Denis Zakaria. What's the latest you can tell us, Gianluca? Hello again. 
Hello, just an update because Chelsea and Juventus have just exchanged documents and contracts about Zakaria. So now is really done and we only have to wait the official announcement. So contracts exchanged between the two clubs, medicals was okay. And so Zakaria will be a Chelsea player loan with option to buy 30 million of pounds. Man, thank you very much indeed. So contracts exchange, we wait for confirmation from Chelsea on that. Uh, confirmation, as you'll have seen on the bottom of your screen in the last couple of minutes, that Southampton have confirmed a deal tonight, and it is the loan signing of Ainsley Maitland-Niles from Arsenal. The 25-year-old uh, comes in on a season-long low move on deadline day, so a couple of hours to go, and they've got that one over the line. I mean, Clinton, he certainly brings some versatility, doesn't he, to uh, Hassan Hootel's squad? I think it's a good signing. He went to Roma, he played a few games, and then he was out of the team, and you thought he was going to do well, but he had a good loan spell a couple of seasons back at West Brom. He knows the Premier League, he's a good player. I think when he went back to Arsenal, he played a few games, but I like him. He can play even full-back, he can play midfield. I think it's a good, um, a good signing for Southampton, and hopefully he gets the game time, because he's had huge potential years um, gone by, but he's never cemented that place at Arsenal. But really good signing. I hope he does well. And he's coming to a club that are, are defying a few critics at the moment. Proven a, predicted to have a bad start. Oh, yeah. Proven a lot of people wrong. And you look at the likes of Che Adams, who there was rumours, is he going to leave the football club? He's been in fantastic form. Armstrong scores the winning goal against Chelsea. They've signed Joe Aribo, who's a talented individual. He's playing at Rangers, who Boydie would know. So they've got some good players and they've got Ward Prowse. He's the one, the standout player. So yeah, I think Southampton will do well this season. They won't struggle like many four anyway, Jules. Yeah, is Ainsley oh, yeah. Maitland-Niles, who is on loan at Southampton from Arsenal. Right, let's get back to the uh, the live game. Let's not forget uh, that uh, Leicester are playing Manchester United right now in the Premier League. Leicester oh. a goal down, still looking for their first win of the season oh. at half-time. Oh, says Clinton. He's not meant to be watching, but he is. Michael is the man watching. What happened, Michael? Yeah, it's James Madison. Oh, Great free kick from 25 yards out. It's... Manchester United have been the better team and, and Leicester have sat in and counter-attacked and it was, it's Martinez, three, three of the back four for Manchester United are now on yellow cards and Malassia uh, and Martinez has just brought Dewsbury Hall down, Dewsbury Hall just runs, Manchester United give it away and he gets it the back four, from that free kick, it's a brilliant free kick from James Madison, he just uses a wall and he whips it, we saw it a few weeks ago, he whipped it round the wall, this one he whipped it over it, the hay is full length, good save. Leicester needed something like that yeah. because it looks pretty flat. Manchester United are comfortable, so they'll be disappointed. They give the ball away in the final third and Leicester counter-attack. And that's what Leicester have to do with the pace that they've got in Jamie Vardy because they have not created anything really from open play. Two little bits of magic from James Madison and then one from uh, Harvey Barnes in the first half who they've got to get on the ball. Dallow's been booked. They've got to get in the ball. You know he's so direct. He gets him, but they just can't get in the ball at the moment. There's it? been a lot of negativity about Leicester at the start of the season, the transfers where they are on the table, but the fact they've kept hold of Madison and the fact that Tielemans starts tonight, they've kept hold of him as well. Two big positives for Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, probably the only positives, really. Jules been bottom of the table, disappointing start to, to the season, and, and players going out the door. Schmeichel, Wesley Fafana... Tielemann's been linked wanting to go. Yeah, he's in his final year of his contract. It, there was rumours today that he might be going to, to certain clubs. Playing tonight, that won't be happening. And, and keeping James Madison as well being linked with, with Newcastle Ernie on, on in the transfer. These players are so important to Leicester to give them a little bit of positivity because you can feel the negativity around the crowd. I mean, look, they haven't been at it tonight. Manchester United have been better so far. But they've got to stick stick with him. As you go, here we go. Dewsbury Hall whipped a, a great ball and it just goes over too high, high for Harvey Barnes. But they have, they've got players that, good players. I think it's just the size of the squad. Players going out the door and none coming in. Michael, thanks very much for now. Well, before kick-off in that game, Manchester United made the uh, Brazil winger Anthony the most expensive deadline day signing in history. Uh, they paid Ajax £86 million for the 22-year-old. He signed a contract until 2027 with the option of an additional year after that. And the move reunites Anthony with United manager Eric Ten Hag. He is now in line to make his debut against Arsenal in the Premier League on Sunday. Olha, o Eric Ten Hag é um, um treinador excelente que eu tenho muito respeito e muito carinho desde a minha chegada é, no Ajax. Ele, ele me tratou super bem, me deu total confiança. E não foi à toa que em dois anos eu tive uma sequência muito boa com ele de jogos. E a gente criou essa confiança, essa intimidade. Então é um treinador que eu tenho muito respeito, muito carinho. Desde quando ele estava lá eu soube da vinda dele para cá. É, desejei muita, muita sorte para ele. 
todo o sucesso, que é uma pessoa que merece muito. E agora, do lado dele novamente, espero é, fazer história e crescer cada vez mais junto com ele. Uh, United have also signed goalkeeper Martin Dubravka on loan from Newcastle. They've agreed to pay two million pounds for that loan and then a further six million if he plays enough games to trigger a permanent transfer. How does it feel to be able to call yourself a Manchester United player? Thank you so much and uh, it's a very exciting time for me. So it's a, it's a massive step in my career again and as I said, I'm happy to be here. When did you become aware that the move might be on? I would say a week ago it started to be a conversation between the um, agents and, and, and the clubs and after that obviously they informed me that this is a chance to, to join them so obviously uh, I said okay let's do it and I'm here now. And what attracted you to this move at this stage of your career? It's a self you know it's massive massive club with a uh, fantastic fan base um, great history. So there we go, two new players in at Manchester United today. Plenty of names we've been discussing and focusing on throughout the day. Let's get an update on a couple of them. We can rejoin Bella. Thanks, Jules. Yeah, we've got a couple of lines to bring you. We're going to start with what's been a bit of a soap opera of the day, Bamba Dieng. Tell us more, Dom. Yeah, I think it's more confirmation now that he is not going to go to Leeds United. Their owner, Andreas Radrazani, was tweeting earlier telling the Leeds United fans, let's welcome Bamba Dieng, let's work on Cody Hapko. I don't think they're getting either. And he's now tweeted once more, basically confirming that they won't be getting him. He says, part of the madness of deadline day, we have been screwed up. It happens even to the best ones. We've done it a great market, planned and executed our targets at a very early stage. Keep going with the muscle bicep emoji, which I know you love to use, <laughs> Bella. An interesting so choice it, it does look like he is going to Nice. There was yeah. a £10 million pound plus deal agreed between Leeds and Marseille, but he had a last minute change of heart when he was going to fly from Nice International Airport. He literally had the plane on standby, didn't he? Well, no, he was going to yeah. fly. The, the, the flight was all there. He was going to fly to Leeds Bradford International Airport, but he had a last minute change of heart and then Nice came in with an offer of a five-year contract he's now finalizing that deal to Nice okay and then what's going on with Douglas Louise Covey look I think time is running out what there's less than two hours left uh, people involved in the deal and now almost ready to throw in the towel when it gets this late it's looking very unlikely that something is going to happen. Arsenal were prepared to pay up to £25 million for a player who's going to be out of contract in a year. But Aston Villa have been very, very firm all along. They don't want to lose the player. The player is not for sale. So it looks like he's staying at Aston Villa. Of course, he'll be able to talk to foreign clubs uh, in January about maybe a free transfer move next summer. But in the meantime, of course, Aston Villa can try and convince him to sign a new contract. OK, and you got one more quick line? Yep, Carve said that Douglas Luiz looks like he's staying at Aston Villa. Another player who looks like he's staying put is Ben Brereton Diaz of Blackburn Rovers. Mm. Fulham had a bid rejected yesterday. They've had a bid rejected today. Everton also in for him, but the asking price was not met. So it looks like Ben Brereton Diaz will remain at Ewood Park for the remainder of the season. However, he is into the final year of his contract. So okay. Blackburn taking a calculated risk here with Brereton Diaz in the team. They'll hope that he can and fire them to promotion and then let's see what happens in the summer okay fantastic thanks guys right back to you jules we'll have more for you shortly great stuff Bella and the team thanks very much indeed for now uh, there we go uh, that's the very latest on a few new, uh, stories and some breaking news there from Darmesh regarding Barrett and Diaz as well just to let you know that uh, Casemiro is about to come on for Manchester United still leading at Leicester 1-0 in the Premier League speaking of midfielders uh, Jurgen Klopp has a new one of his own full details when we cross live to Anfield next
Welcome back to Deadline Day. The countdown, one hour, 42 minutes until the, the window shuts. Let's see what's happening with Liverpool and Arta Mello, the midfielder, who is on Merseyside. What is the latest? We can go to Vinny O'Connor, who's at the club's training ground. Hi again, Vinny. Yeah, Jules, I feel a bit disappointed, actually, because Arthur's had a much more straightforward day than the likes of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. All he did was hop on a plane in Turin around about 10 o'clock this morning, flew into Blackpool, was brought to Merseyside for his medical, and he's been inside Liverpool's training at HQ just formalising the deal. So we can give you the breaking news, of course, that we brought to you around about an hour ago as well, the fact that Arthur has signed that contract with Liverpool. And the detail behind that deal is as follows. It will be a season-long loan with no options. The wages will be split between... Between the two clubs, with Liverpool paying the majority of those wages. Three other clubs wanted Arthur as well. He was only going to go to Liverpool, though, once he knew of their interest. He wants to play at the highest level. Of course, he wants to guarantee his place as far as possible in the Brazil World Cup squad. He has been in the Brazil preliminary 30-man squad list. No formal announcement from Liverpool as yet, but Jurgen Klopp bringing in much-needed reinforcement in their one piece of business in terms of incomings on this transfer deadline day. Vinny, thanks very much indeed. And worth remembering, they've got the Merseyside derby on Saturday. And, of course, Everton have a new midfielder in the door. Well, an old face who's back there, Idrissa uh, Gay, and he will feature, or he's in the squad and available to play, at least, in that game on Saturday lunchtime. Let's see what's happening in the match tonight in the Premier League. An hour or so gone at the King Power Stadium. Casemiro, I think, is on now, isn't he, for Manchester United, Michael? He is, yeah. And they've had a little bit of change of shape. Alanga was, was playing out wide. Bruno's gone there, but he doesn't play... With chalk on his boots, he's, he's tucked inside, but Casemiro's playing alongside McTominay, uh, just in front of the back four. He's, he's had three touches here, and I said, I mean, two passes were easy. The, the third one, he goes past the one, and then it's, it's a, it's a di diagonal out wide. I like him in there with McTominay, because he can give Casemiro the ball anywhere. Leicester started the second half brilliant, mm -hmm. brilliantly. In the last five minutes, Manchester United are looking to it on the counter-attack with, with the pace of Sancho down the left and, and Rashford. The, Leicester are now trying to push on. They need, they're, they're chasing the game. Just gone to Cristiano Ronaldo. He's not warming up yet, but still 1-0 no, Man United. smells in his face, so. He's not <laughs> <That's> happy there, <laughs> isn't he? Oh, he's thinking. Here we go. Harvey Barnes. In, yeah. Fardy's been isolated up to He must have touched the ball about five times all, all game. Harvey Barnes and Dewsbury Hall have been the bright spots for, for Leicester. OK, Michael, thanks. Nearly 63 minutes gone. Manchester United still on course for a third successive Premier League win. If they do win it, they'll go up to fifth from 12th and they'll go above Liverpool. Uh, we heard from Liverpool, we're doing about Arta Mello coming into the club. Let's uh, get the other side of the Merseyside covered off now at Everton. And uh, I mentioned Idrissa Gay, didn't I? Let's get up the latest with him and other potential incomings with Alan Irwin. Yeah, Idrissa Ghana Gay deal was completed shortly before five o'clock today. It had taken a while, but we told you throughout the day that it was going to happen. His return to Everton Football Club after departing in 2019, having made 108 appearances, scoring four goals in the pro process. A very popular figure with Everton fans. And likewise, Idrissa Ghana Gay saying if he was to come back to the Premier League, there's only one place he wanted to play his football, here at Everton. Not better feeling than uh, coming back home, seeing, seeing my some brothers here, and I'm very happy to to be here to help and to 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 work hard and to give my soul for for this team. We know there was lots of interest in you from clubs around Europe. And why was coming back to Everton so important to you? I feel like like home, and uh, I know everybody here, and seeing uh, seeing this team, following this team every week, how they play. So I, like I said to you, I cannot feel better in a better place than uh, than Everton. So that's why I I chose uh, to come back here and to give uh, everything I, I I have and to give my soul to to this team. So he's back and um, maybe wearing the Everton jersey again as soon as Saturday in a Merseyside derby. And alongside him may well be another man because Everton are still to complete a deal this evening. And that will be for James Garner, the 21-year-old Manchester United midfielder who's had limited opportunities at United, was on Nottingham Forest at Nottingham Forest on loan, of course, last season. He's been here for a good few hours now trying to 
finalise the deal that will bring him to Everton and we expect that to get over the line before deadline closes at 11 o'clock. If it does, that will mean Everton have brought in eight players over this transfer window, two of them loan deals. There'll be six permanent signings. The deal for James Garner will total around about £15.5 after an initial fee of nine and a half. So they're not done yet here at Everton and there are still... Uh, are plenty of uh, people still talking about the possibility of a real late deal for a striker, Ben Brereton Diaz? But uh, the clubs are very far apart at the moment on their valuations. Alan, thanks for now. So they have to wait on Garner, but Garner's in. You know what I mean. Um, Sue, we know your allegiance. Uh, address the Garner game back at Goodison. Good move? Yeah, really good move. It's one that's, that's been spoken about for, for quite a while. It's certainly an area that, that Everton needed to, to invest in. I think the, the players that they've brought in, in terms of defensively, Tarkovsky and, and Cody, I think good signings in terms of you look at the last two games, would Everton have, have maybe lost them last season without those two? Maybe they, they managed to get the draw, just real leaders at the back. And I think they, they just need a player like Idrissa Gay who knows the club so well. You know his energy, you know the quality that he can provide. So, yes, of course, him. If you can get Garner in as well, um, that would be brilliant. Anana's in there. Iwobi's been doing really well for Everton. He's been probably one of Everton's best players. They still need another striker. So if, if they could get another striker in, I think that would be that would be huge for Everton, along with Mope and obviously getting Dominic Calvert-Lewin back. But I think, yeah, Idrissa Gay, great signing for, for Everton. Chris, has this been a good window for Everton? Unbeaten in four. What's the problem, Steve? <laughs> it's the best run they've been on in years, hasn't it? <laughs> Do the few three points rather than one. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's no doubt, I think, you know, what Sue says there as well, that the striker is, you know, the striker role is a problem. I know they've brought in Mopi, but you've got to look at now Mopi as well and think, you look at the chances that Brighton create, and he, you know, I mean, what was he, 10, 12 goals last season? Um, I don't think Everton create the same amount of chances as what Brighton, so he's going to have his work cut out there as well. But, you know, there's one thing about Mopi, he works for the team, and I think, you know, that's, you know, when you listen to, to Frank speak and um, he wants his team just to, to be hard working and then you're hoping that maybe that little bit of quality will come through but first and foremost because it was labelled at Everton last season in terms of the work rate and you know the one that was you know the hardest working out and all was Anthony Gordon so if you can add a few more of that type um, you know hopefully things will, will turn for, for Everton and that's what you know Frank Lampard will be looking for and Clinton they conceded 66 goals last season didn't they um, with the business that Lampard's done do they, do they look harder to beat now? Yeah, they look harder to beat, and I think he's done good business. Sue spot, spot on. Tarkovsky knows the league, had many successful years at Burnley. Connor Cody, I think, is brilliant. When there was no fans in the ground, you, I go to grounds, you can always hear him talking. He's the only player you can hear talking on that pitch. I think he'll be, he's been brilliant there, um, to be fair. And I tell you what, it's just a guy in a game. I like him. I like him. I liked him. I, I watched him from when he was first here, and then he moved and went to PSG. He's a player, by the way. He'll be good in there with Anana. As Sue said, a world be has been good, and uh, I didn't. I thought Wobi might come out, but Sue said he's, well, Wobi's been outstanding. So they have a lot of good. I do believe they need a centre forward. Mm. They need a centre forward. Bereton Diaz would be a good signing, but Calvin Lewin's coming back. Calvin Lewin can play with Mopay. Everyone will be fine. Credit to the hierarchy. They've backed Frank Lampard. They brought in good players. And now, when I work with you in the midweek, you'll have a smile on your face and you won't be <laughs> worrying about Everton. You'll be happy now. I will never stop worrying. You know that. <laughs> That's what we do as Evertonians. Um, just finally, so let's finish with you uh, on the, the, the Everton situation and um, the striker situation then. Calvert Lewin coming back from injury. Mope is in. If they don't get a Brereton Diaz or someone else in tonight, do they still look short up front? I think it'll still be disappointing, obviously, losing Richarlison, who was you know, so key to Everton's survival mm. last season. Just keeping Dominic Calvert-Lewin fit, I think that's the concern. Obviously, last season, lots of, of injury worries just before the season's about to start. He gets injured again, so that's, that's unlucky. I do think Mopay will be a good sign. He's not going to be prolific, but I think what you will get, you'll get hard work. Yeah. You'll get a, a player that's good on the ball that will link play. And if you can obviously add the, the goals as well, um, I, th I think that will be key. But, yeah, ideally... I, a and a quick be. bit of good business that they've done. Kept Anthony Gordon. Yes. Well, yeah. Very good Did you to it? There you go. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> there you go. That's, Great probably, minds think that's probably the best bit of business. Yeah. I know, I know you, people are, are speaking about you know the, the money you would get from yeah. but it's going to be very difficult to replace them. You've seen what some teams are having to pay for players as well to get them in. Definitely. We're never going to replace them. Um, and I think you know he, he loves Everton. You can see that in his last two performances. Usually when people are linked away with moves for that type of money, it's going to be life-changing for him. Yeah. Sometimes the down, down tools, but he's went the opposite way. His attitude's been yeah. brilliant. He's unbelievable. brilliant. Yeah. 
unbelievable. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's why you love him. Evertonians, yes. you love him. Go on the top. Yeah, yeah, he is. Go on Jules, the top. Is, uh, Jules is happy. Look, <laughs> he's had the big he smile away. <laughs> Listen, we all know deadline day. Occasionally, there's a really dramatic user. No, I, I think, I think no, that, is, that is dead in the water. He is staying at Goodison Park. Right, uh, coming up next, the, the latest from Nottingham Forest. They are closing in on another new player with another striker. Uh, plus, much more on Aubameyang to Chelsea. The former Arsenal captain is back in London. Sancho. Rush. Welcome back. We'll get another update from Michael watching Leicester Manchester United very shortly. You can see some breaking news there that Southampton have signed Sam Adozi from Manchester City. More on that to come. First, let's rejoin Bella. Thanks very much. I've got the transfer trio with me. We're having a great time, aren't we? Terrific. <laughs> Carve? Yeah, really enjoying it. You're loving it. Yeah. Melissa's face says it all. OK, Carve, you've got a couple of lines for us. Yes, look, these are just uh, three deals that are progressing well at the moment. The first one is Dan James leads to Fulham on loan. The second one, Billy Gilmore, Chelsea to Brighton, £10 million permanent move. The third one, Duja Coletta Carr, Marseille to Southampton, €10 million. Euros. We're being told that the medicals are all done or just being finished now. There doesn't appear to be an issue with any of the medicals, so all being well. These deals should be completed right now. At this moment, the paperwork is being done. So Dan James, Billy Gilmore, Duja Coletta, Carr, looks like they will all be done. OK, Darmesh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is back in London town. He is in London town and Gary Cottrell, the irrepressible <laughs> Gary Cottrell, managed to get a few words out of him. And, you know, the, the minder did try and block the camera. If anyone and, can, Gary can. And, and, and he still managed to say, look, you know, good to be back in the Premier League. 
Not completely done yet. The deal between the two clubs is agreed between Chelsea and Barcelona. Uh, Chelsea will lose Marcos Alonso and over £10 million. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang will be reunited with Thomas Tuchel. He's having his medical right now. We would expect this one to get done and dusted before the deadline. So Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang back in the Premier League and back under Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Right, Melissa, you're going to talk to us about Memphis Depay. What's the latest there? So we've known that Depay is trying to facilitate an exit from Barcelona, but obviously quite late now, intermediaries are trying to place him with Chelsea, but that's quite tricky. Their squad number's already high. There's time running out. So that doesn't look like it would be plausible. Mm -hmm. There is a chance that maybe he could get Barcelona to, before the deadline, tear up his contract. So if they terminate his current terms with them, he'd be able to move as a free agent after this window. But if they don't terminate his deal before deadline and they terminate it, say, next month or in the following days, he'd have to wait till January anyway to sign for a new club. So they're trying to find a solution very, very taxing and tricky to do with this amount of time mm. left. Um, so hopefully it works out for him because we do know Barcelona have been trying to get players off their books, have been trying to trim their wages. It would be in their be best interest as well to tear up his deal. But yeah, we don't know how that's going to go out for him. Okay, keep us across that one. We haven't spoken Nottingham Forest for a while. I mean, they must be up to 50 signings by now, Damage. <laughs> close, very, very close, yeah. They had 18 going into deadline day. They made it 19 with Willie Bowley from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Permanent deal, two-year contract, £4.65 million all in. They're not finished either. Uh, Serge Aurier, that, that doesn't have to be announced today because yeah. he's a free agent after a short-term contract at Villarreal expired. Everything there, we think, is agreed. The Ren defender, mm. Loic Bardet, he is close to signing as well. We think he's completed his medical loan with an option for £12 million. Josh Bowler, the one that Carver has been talking about throughout this transfer window, the Blackpool attacking midfielder, he's been having a medical today. This one will be a permanent deal, £2 million initial fee. He'll be loaned straight to Olympiakos right. for one season before coming back to Forest. And then the one that's emerged this evening, he seems to be going on loan nearly every single summer, the Chelsea striker, Mishi Batshuayi. He, his contract, though, does expire next summer. So he's got one year left of his contract. What Chelsea normally do before they allow him to go on loan, is extend that contract by a further year, allow him to go on loan and then come back. And if they want to sell him next summer, if he's had a good season, his value will stay up. So I think there's a potential that if and when this one gets announced, because he's been having a medical this evening, you might hear that Chelsea have extended his contract until 2024 first. Yeah, right, OK. Did you want to come uh, in? How many of Nottingham Forest bought this summer then? What's the total? At the moment, it's 19. It could get to 23. 23 in total. I mean, that's obviously the most that anyone's signed. The most that anyone's let go, uh, interestingly, this summer is PSG. They have let 20 players go during this window, including Gay today, Paredes yesterday to Juventus, uh, Wijnaldum, Angel Di Maria as well. Uh, and we've been told tonight that it could be 21 or 22 players they've let go before the window closes. OK, Melissa, what's the latest on Arthur Mello? Just waiting for the official announcement, which should be dropping shortly. He's been doing his media duties at the training centre. He's already said he's, thanks to Juventus, changed his location on his social media profile. So he's running faster than Liverpool are <laughs> at the moment. I, I think they would assume he's making um, quite a sharp start to his life at Anfield without even having officially joined yeah yeah absolutely right a bit more west london from you yeah fulham i mean carve mentioned daniel james so that one looks like it's going to happen the other one that's very close to happening is the benfica striker carlos vinicius you'll remember him he had a loan spell at tottenham mm. he had a two-year two-season loan spell at psv eindhoven he's halfway through that that will be stopped and he will sign for 4.25 million pounds for Fulham. Earlier on, they signed Lavin Kozawa from PSG, the left-back, and Willian, who's been training with them. That one has been announced as well. Ben Brereton diaz though, they made a bid for him yesterday. They made a bid for him today. Blackburn said thanks, mm. but no thanks. Ben Brereton diaz will remain at Ewood Park, but he's entered the final year of his contract. Yeah, I'd love to see him in the Premier League. Good player. All right, Jules, back to you in the studio for the game. 
Bella and the transfer trio, thank you very much uh, indeed. Let's yeah, get back to the game that Bella mentioned there at the King Power Stadium, Leicester against Manchester United. There was a point, of course, when we thought that uh, Ronaldo was going to be on his bike this summer. He was on the bus tonight to the King Power, and now he's off the bench, Michael. Yeah, he's, he's come on for the goal scorer, Sancho, and he's playing as a, as a number nine, and Marcus Rashford's gone to the left. Leicester have also made a change. Tillerman, who was, who was very good tonight, Boyd, he said to me, has he got a pen down his socks? Is he going to go and sign somewhere else? That's not happened, by the way. He's come off. They made the, the chase because they're chasing it. And that Joe's come on. So they've gone two up top and, and he's come out of the midfield. But it's pretty, I'm just looking at the stats, six shots each on, on goal, two on target for each. Need a keeper, apart from De Gea, from the magnificent free kick from, from Madison that I spoke about earlier. Not had a lot to do. Mm. But it could be enough for Manchester United to win for the third Premier League game in a row. Ten minutes to go. Michael, thanks so much indeed. We're going to uh, go to a club now that's going to certainly prick your attention, I should think, because it's Tottenham, your old club. It's been a, a quiet deadline day for them, really. No new signings. And Brian Keel is staying. Ultimately, Tottenham's desire to give Antonio Conte what he wanted, six or seven signings early in the window, meant that the key business was done before a ball was kicked in this Premier League season. There was still the possibility of further additions on the final day, but a breakdown in talks with Valencia over Brian Hill's exit and Jaffet Tanganga staying put meant it was quiet here. Tottenham will point to the fact they're stronger than they were last season. The points tally in August reflects that. But as Conte said on Monday, time patience and two transfer windows are required to turn them into genuine title contenders. For now the focus is back on football as Tottenham prepare to host Fulham on Saturday as they attempt to close the gap on early season leaders Arsenal. Paul Gilmore on what is looking like a quiet night for uh, Spurs. Uh, let's bring you in Michael, uh, Spurs being your old club. £172 million to make it spent this summer on the likes of Bissouma, Spence, Richarlison. Perisic was free, long lay on loan. Has this been a good window for Spurs? Very good. And, and I like the fact that they did the business so early on. I think that was, that was key. And I think um, the first signing in, in Perisic, 33 years old, done in, in the summer. I thought that was a sign for me that Antonio's in charge. He's staying. He's gone out and signed yeah. him. Wing back, they needed in, in that position. Then Basuma coming in. And I think, oh, it's, Jude, we all had a shot. Uh, Multitasking Bas here, Michael. Basuma, brilliant signing, 25 million for you. You watch it, clearly. Yeah, I'll watch I'll it for you while you do that, yeah. Brilliant. And I think Richarlison, for me, was the icing on the kick. £60 million? Pound? Awful lot of money. Yeah. Awful lot of money. I think if a player is going to start on the bench a lot. Yes, but I think it's brought... You're now talking about Son being under pressure. If one of the front three with Kulosevsky, Kane, Son don't perform, you've oh, now yeah, got yeah, Richarlison, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who's, who's on, the, on the bench coming off and he's made a difference in the games, yeah. recent games. The viewers don't want to hear about that. The viewers don't want to hear about that. Yeah, tell I'll tell in you, charge. I Dallos stood a ball up to the back post. Cristiano Ronaldo, brilliant over a kick, bounces into the ground, just goes wide. Back to you, Doug. You're better, oh. Igley. I like it. Let's go, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jules, don't be like that. No one can do your job, mate. Come on. Come back. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean you look, going back to Richarlison, you look at Jesus, was he for, for the price of him, yes, yeah, but he was never going to come and play because when you have Harry, yeah. you have Kulosevsky who came in in January and you have Son. Richarlison, great signing. Jed Spence, I looked at that one and thought, is he going to come and play? I think Emerson Rolls improved. So it's putting pressure under them kind of players, I think, yeah, it's a really good transfer window for, for Spurs. Mm. And it was done so early on. Mm. How strong... <laughs> look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> um, how strong do you think Spurs look now, Chris? Oh, they're very strong. I mean, there's no doubt about it. As Michael's um, spoken about there, they've got, you know, two players for more or less every position. Um, I know it broke your hearts when Charlottesen moved on, the Perrys, but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, and he, he probably is going to have to bide his time to get in there, but there's one thing about him. He's going to push the others. Um, you know, there's obviously Son, I don't think, started the season that great. Yeah, um, but... You know, when you look at the competition uh, for places there now, they're going to push, you know, push and push and push the players that have got the, uh, the, the, the shirt at this moment in time to the max, and that can only be good for Tottenham. Mm. So, you know, Doss will be absolutely delighted. <laughs> <laughs> um, just finally on Spurs, Dan James was a name linked earlier today. Uh, looks more likely to be Fulham now, but I think Spurs were interested. Can you see why they would have been? No, no I'm not being disrespectful to Dan James, but with Charleston and they paid over 60 million, he's not getting in at the moment. They've still got Lucas Moura there at the football club, yeah. so I was surprised when they were interested in Dan James. I think Fulham's probably a, a better destination for him because I think he'll get more game time, but it was probably maybe another body that Antonio Conte wanted there. But in this stage of his career, 
Dan James needs to be playing football week in, week out. You know, Wales, they're going to the World Cup in November. He needs to be playing. He does need to be playing. So I feel like the move to Fulham will be a good move. I couldn't really see him getting much game time at Tottenham. And Tottenham have done great business. Maybe I hear a few fans saying they maybe wanted one or two maybe signings, but I think the business they've done has been brilliant because they have got Lucas Moura to come back into that squad. I think that's the funny thing. Look, we're used to seeing some clubs do their business late in the window. They get it done early and they're still getting criticised saying, why are you not signing players right at the end? <laughs> exactly. And then you've got clubs who usually do it at the end and then they're scrambling. I mean, you know, over the years, Manchester United usually get their business done mm. where, well, when they were successful. But you're now looking at it and they're scrambling about it up there at the last minute. Tottenham got their business done early, so Tottenham fans can relax. You know, they've got players in, started the season well. Um, and I'm sure they'll get stronger as, yeah, as the yeah. season goes on. Right, if we get any more news on Dan James, we will let you know, of course, because there is one hour, uh, 16 minutes left of this transfer window. Uh, we'll be back very shortly, but a reminder of our exclusive shots early this evening of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang arriving in London for his Chelsea medical. The deal is not done yet. Stay oh. with us to find out. French coming on. That looked nasty, though. No, I don't. I think he's got the... That Welcome back to Deadline Day. The countdown, one hour, 13 minutes remaining. Uh, a done deal that we brought in this evening has seen Leander Dendonka swap Wolves for Aston Villa. And we can hear from him now. I'm very excited, obviously, um, because I've signed for Villa. Um, new challenge for me. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I've been shown around already here at the training ground and you can feel... Um, about everything that this is a big club, um, I think you can just feel it. Um, I obviously know the players as well from from playing against them. Um, I know it's it's a, a very good team, very good players. So I'm really I'm really happy to be here. And you're a versatile player. Do you think you can help the team in a number of positions when needed? 
yeah, definitely. I can play both midfield and, and defender. So, um, yeah, I will, I will help the team where, where they need me. The most uh, right, the 90 minutes are nearly up in the Premier League game at the King Power Stadium. Manchester United still leading Leicester by that Sancho first half goal to nil. Michael Dawson's watching it, as are the other three in the studio, really. Um, Michael, is a Leicester le a leveler looking likely? Well, in that show, nearly scored, but in the in the wrong end. So it's a free kick, uh, uh, a corner for Manchester United. Now he's trapped back, and Bruno Fernandes looked to put a, uh, a great delivery in, and that's your run back. Comes off his left foot, and he got luckily for Danny Ward, he goes over the bar. And now they're just playing for time. Manchester United, they've got it in, in Leicester's corner, and they're just playing there. Happy we're into time, and I don't, which was four minutes left. Christian Eriksen has just been named player of the match. It's been very comfortable for Manchester United. Jamie Vardy's just been taken off after getting booked for a, for a tackle on Malasia, which was late. It looked a frustrated challenge. Summed up his night, really. He's just been taken off for, for Pats and Dakar that they're trying to play, but it looks like Manchester United are going to hold on for a 1-0 win. And, and just quickly, I wondered uh, about 24 hours ago whether Ronaldo was going to be the big story of the night. He's not. He's staying United. He's on the pitch now. Has he done much? Not really, no. I think it's been... Uh, it's Manchester United have actually sat quite deep and when Rashford w w was on he's now been taken off for Fred the they're sitting in deep as Leicester go forward it's an actual into Madison left yeah. foot over the bar no he hasn't, really, he hasn't had much of an impact since he's, he's come on which you can see the way Tan Hag plays they look to play on the counter and they need pace in wide areas which they had Alanga they had Sancho they had Marcus Rashford so I think he's going to be a little bit of a bit player, Ronaldo, this year. I really do just the way he sets up when he, he likes pacing his team. When Martial comes back, Anthony comes into the team. They've got pace, so Ma Cristiano Ronaldo, he's done everything in the game, won everything. Now he's going to have to be a, a player that helps the younger players. In and around the squad, it's not all about him anymore. The career he's had, nothing short of sensational, but he isn't a starter for Manchester United this season. I'll come back to you at full time. Ronaldo staying at Manchester United. Anthony, of course, the big signing today. Uh, what about Newcastle? They've had a, a busy transfer window, but after signing Alexander Izak for that club record, £63 million, no more additions so far on deadline day. There has been a high-profile exit, though. It was a quiet deadline day here at Newcastle United, despite a busy window Overall, they tried to bring in the young West Ham fullback Harrison Ashby on a permanent contract, but the Hammers were unwilling to let him leave after they failed in their pursuit for Jan Bednarek. Newcastle also inquired once again for Chelsea winger Christian Pulisic on loan, but were told by the Blues that he would not be leaving. They also fancied Conor Gallagher, but it was a similar uh, situation with the young Englishman. It was a busy window, though, for Newcastle away from today. They smashed their transfer records a week ago today when Alexander Izak arrived for 58, rising to £63 million, following in the footsteps of Nick Pope, Matt Target and Sven Botman. There was one high-profile exit from St James's Park today when Slovakian goalkeeper Martin Dubravka left on loan to Manchester United. Yeah, Martin Dubravka uh, trying to provide competition for uh, David De Gea at Manchester United. Leicester had a chance to beat the United keeper in stoppage time at the King Power Stadium, but Michael Dawson. Yeah, it was funny enough, Jeff. Ronaldo was 1v1. I thought it was. Jeff! Jeff! Uh, sorry, Jeff! <laughs> 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 this is Jeff, Jim. Jeff! I mean, sorry, Jim. The studio downstairs, I expected. But come on, up here. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. Jules, I do apologise. Oh, After speaking about Cristiano Ronaldo, I thought he was going to score. I knew you were all going to come back and say, what are you saying about Cristiano Ronaldo? He gave the ball away and you said, here we go, we might not see him again. He gives the ball away. So Mario picks the ball up. He plays a long ball to Inacho. He makes a great flick round the corner to James Justin. Leicester's right back. That's how, how far up the field he is. He gets in the box and you think, go on, hit the target. He does what I did. Jules called him the wrong name, puts it well over the bar, and has a nightmare. One nil, Man United. <laughs> really? Uh, and I mean, uh, uh, Dors. Uh, <laughs> full time whistle has gone. Handshakes between the two managers. De uh, De I'm at it. Oh, Ten, Hag is, uh, Ten Hag is the happy man. Brendan Rodgers looked uh, very unhappy. I mean, where did Leicester go from here? One point in five games. It's the first time that Rodgers has lost four in a row in the league since his Swansea days ten years ago. Oh, it's worrying times for Leicester. It really, really is. They've got Brighton away on Sunday, which doesn't get any easier. Good team. Yes, they lost last night. And, and Manchester United, three on the bounce. You see them against Southampton at the weekend. Weren't, weren't great, did enough. Tonight was the same. They've done enough against Leicester, who they probably had a 15-minute period in the second half that had a real goal. One little bit of magic from Madison. 
the hair comes good and Manchester United done enough. Three on the bounce. Yeah, three on the bounce. They're up to fifth in the table. They're above Liverpool. They've got Arsenal on Super Sunday uh, of the weekend. And, and, you know, they've got Anthony Sue to throw in now. <laughs> £86 million pounds worth of Anthony. They've got Casemiro not starting games yet. You know, a couple of weeks ago it was doom and gloom when they were losing back-to-back. Are, are there promising times ahead for United now? I think there is promising times. Like, if you look at the opening games of the season and, and the criticism that, that we were all saying was they weren't working hard, that there seemed to be no plan, that the character wasn't quite there. And then suddenly in these last three games, we've started to see that. The Liverpool game was certainly a, a huge turning point. And I think when you look at Ten Hag and you look at the team that he wants, he wants a team that's going to dominate games, they're going to control possession, play through the thirds. But at times, they can't do that. Against Liverpool, they got the tactics absolutely spot on, didn't they? You know, knew that Liverpool were going to play a high line, knew that they could maybe exploit, exploit the, the wide um, positions in Trent Alexander-Arnold, Robertson, when they go forward, use pacey forwards, and it worked for them. So it's a case of getting your tactics right for each game, having that desire, having that character, and, and working hard. And, and even if you just grind results out at the moment, like you say, you're adding in those players. You know, Casemiro is going to improve them, isn't he? Anthony, you think, is he going to come in? Which side's he going to come in? Does that mean that Rashford will go central with, with Martial? you've got Ronaldo to go in there so you've got different options that you can mix things up competition for places so yes they've spent a lot of money so w- which means that straight away there's going to be pressure but it's certainly looking more positive mm. for Manchester United now than it was yeah. a few weeks ago I, think, you know, I mean even when you're off the back of the Liverpool game a lot of people are then saying you've two away games go to Southampton go to Leicester difficult grounds to go yeah. they've went there they've got six points you're now looking back home at the weekend against Arsenal then they go to Palace which will be a big test yeah of course um, and then Leeds and, and you know, Manchester City it's amazing how football and even I, like, I, I think it was maybe me, uh, me and you Norwich as well in the championship you know, they'd lost the, f- the first two or three and then they, they go four victories in a row and all of a sudden yeah. football just changes so quickly and with their midweek games and you turn it around um, you, know, you can propel yourself at a table Manchester United right now a good place no, they are they're in a brilliant place these results are massive because when we saw the performance against Liverpool you can turn up against Liverpool because it's a big derby and the fans and it's a rivalry then you think the old Man United that were the last couple of seasons you're thinking go to Southampton you end up losing put on a brilliant performance against Southampton another positive performance tonight against Leicester a few bodies have come through it's positive signs there um, for them I like Sancho though he looks like he's getting back to his best alongside yeah. Rashford yeah, he had to because last season wasn't good enough yeah, some, the price he, he was that. bought for he had to step up us season he has. Manchester United win for the third game in a row, up to fifth in the uh, Premier League. One hour, four minutes left of the transfer window. United have signed Anthony today. Um, Chelsea are looking to get Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang over the line as well. He's having his medical and Liverpool's search for a midfielder has led them to Arta Mello. How close Liverpool to confirming this deal? Stay with us on Deadline Day to find out.
Welcome along, good evening. It is deadline day, the countdown now less than one hour to go. It's been quite a summer of signings, hasn't it? And there are still plenty of big deals to be done tonight. And we start this hour with some breaking news from Liverpool. Vinny O'Connor. Yes, in the last few minutes, Liverpool have formally announced that Arthur Mello has joined them on a, on a season-long loan from Juventus. We can give you a bit of detail behind that deal as well as we understand it. The season-long loan will mean that Liverpool will pay the majority of his wages through that time, although both clubs sharing a portion of his wages in that respect but also the fact that there are no options included within that deal. But just to give you a little bit of background into Liverpool's thinking as well, as Jurgen Klopp has repeatedly said throughout this window, Liverpool have been exploring midfield options, uh, but for various reasons, most notably availability, the right opportunity has not presented itself primarily, really, due to clubs being unwilling to sell. Jude Bellingham would be a case in point in that respect. Although Liverpool do have injuries in midfield at the moment as well, the reality is that Curtis Jones is now back in the first-team squad squad. Thiago's close to returning as well. So the kind of outside perception that Liverpool really needed to strengthen within midfield urgently was not really felt or shared within the club. The fact of the matter was that each injured player is going to return at some point as well. But nevertheless, a combination of being prudent and an ongoing desire to strengthen where possible as well meant that Liverpool maintained an interest within the market and there was a desire there to sign the right player on terms that suited both their short-term and long-term ambitions. Uh, and if, the, if, that, if those kind of criteria were met, then they would look to move in the market as they have done today. So as part of this approach, it was never just a case of signing any midfield player. It had to be where the need was greatest. And it, it was also to ensure that the pathway that the likes of Harvey Elliott, Fabio Carvalho are on at the moment, Curtis Jones as well, uh, was not blocked. So... Um, as such, the preference throughout was, if possible, to recruit, uh, to recruit, I should say, a more experienced player who could fill a deep-lying midfield role. Arthur's availability on loan allowed Liverpool to achieve all of those objectives with his experience at the highest level, of course, as well, being a, an additional attraction. Also, the fact that he already knows players here, the Brazilian contingent, and also Tafarel, of course. So... The extra motivation for someone like Arthur Mello as well coming here is first-team football. He wants to force his way into the Brazil World Cup squad, where, of course, Liverpool have been able to add a much-needed reinforcement into that midfield area, particularly given the injury suffered by Jordan Henderson. So, a deal that suits all parties. It suits Juve, it suits Mello, and definitely suits Liverpool Football Club. Vinny O'Connor, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, a case of uh, mellow yellow on uh, a deadline day. Uh, that's one of the big deals we've been looking for to be completed before the deadline. And uh, here's another one we're watching very closely. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, he's in London for his medical ahead of a move to Chelsea. Gary Cotterell is there with him. Gary, what can you tell us? He's very, very pleased uh, to be back uh, in London, very pleased to be back in the Premier League, very pleased to be back with Thomas Tuchel, says he's going to do his best, try his hardest, thinks he's still got plenty to offer. It's been an exciting, long day for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. It started in Barcelona. He was seen around and about having his hair cut, actually, at one point, wanting to look his best for his uh, first moments at his new club. Then he popped into the Barcelona training ground for about half an hour just to say goodbye to his teammates who were training this afternoon and, of course, the staff. Then a flight from Barcelona to a London airport and then a journey here to this clinic uh, in West London for his uh, medical. It was a, an interesting arrival, a bit more on the problems that the driver had when he got there in a moment, but uh, he did get out of the van and, despite the best efforts of his security guard, <laughs> we managed to have that brief word. Yeah, Pierre, welcome back to London. Hello. Looking forward to the challenge? For well, sure. <laughs> Great to be back in the Premier League. Yeah, back, back. <laughs> well, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you. Linking up again with Thomas Tuchel as well. That's nice, though. <laughs> I think you've got a lot to offer. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah, there was a Keystone Cops moment, a bit of wacky races before we managed to get those pictures and those words with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang because as I mentioned, that the driver 
came to this clinic. He either hasn't been here before, or if he's been here before, he's forgotten about the layout because there is an underground car park. First of all, he's tried to get in the outway, so going down the ramp to a barrier which only let cars coming out the other way. So the barrier wouldn't open, so he reversed out, sat there for a while, scratched his head. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and his entourage in the back all the time. Then went round the corner to the in-ramp, but passed the in-ramp, missed it completely. Then got stuck on a one-way system until he looped back round again about five minutes later and went through the whole procedure again before, in the end, giving up. And they just had to make that 10, 15-metre walk into the front entrance. So not the best start possible to his Chelsea career, but if he could start on the pitch, like he started at Arsenal, if he start on the pitch like he started at Barcelona, then I'm sure uh, he won't mind a little bit of a hiccup on his arrival here this evening. <laughs> very good, Gary. <laughs> Gary Cottrell, thank you very much indeed. And I, I tell you what, I do hope for that driver's sake they don't miss the deal by about five minutes. <laughs> Could go back to bite him. I'm sure it'll be fine. And it would be a double deal for Chelsea on this deadline day because they have also agreed uh, a loan deal with Juventus for the midfielder, Dennis Zakaria. Uh, he only joined Juve from Borussia Mönchengladbach in January this year. He's made 11 appearances for the Serie A club. He wanted to be playing first-team football and he is off to Chelsea on loan. Right, we are into the last hour. We've got some breaking news. Hopefully we'll have plenty of this for you over the next hour or so. Let's get to Bella. Yeah, thanks Jules. Top banter from Gary as well as per. Right, Carve. What's going on with Douglas Luiz? Uh, look, Arsenal's final bid has been rejected by Aston Villa. Uh, the bid was worth around £25 million, £23 million plus £2 million in add-ons. That has been rejected, so the player will not be leaving Aston Villa. That's what Villa have been saying all day. The player is not for sale. Now, some of the people involved in the negotiations are a little bit bemused because they were led to believe towards the end of last week that Aston Villa would listen to offers of around £20 million for the player because he hadn't really been starting games under Steven Gerrard. I think he's only started one game under Steven Gerrard and he's out of contract in the summer. There was a lot of interest in him. Arsenal were willing to pay £25 million, but Aston Villa have said no, the player's not for sale, even though he's only got a year left on his contract. OK, and Melissa, you got a quick line as well. Yeah, you? so we were just chatting about Memphis Depay and his people trying to push through an exit, intermediaries, fishing him around, including to Chelsea. He's tweeted, I have decided to stay at Barca, fully committed to contribute to the club's sporting success. I think that's also code for, we left it too late in the window <laughs> to get anything I wanted done. OK, and you? I'm good. You're good. Yeah. All right, you chill. And uh, back to you, Jules. <laughs> I think it's the first time in the last three months that Darmesh hasn't had some news to bring us. He has so many breaking lines, but nothing right now. I'm sure there'll be more before we, we finish tonight. Um, on that, Douglas Louise, then, you know, Arsenal were pushing for him uh, this evening. Two bids, uh, the second one rejected by Villa. Can you understand their resistance there, Clinton? Well, it depends, really. Is he going to play there? He hasn't played a lot um, this season. Now, obviously, um, he played l last night against um, Arsenal and he's played a couple of times before that. But he hasn't been a regular in that midfield. And you can see a move to Arsenal. It's a big move. They're flying at the moment. He's got a year left and 25 million. That's good money for someone who's got a year left. So I don't know what's going. It's probably Stevie G or the hierarchy don't want to sell him because he's going to be part of their plans. But it's big money because come um, near January, he can sign a pre-contract and go somewhere else. So I am a bit surprised Aston Villa haven't took it, but probably the position they're in at the moment, they want everyone on board and everyone together. But he'll be probably devastated, Douglas Suiza. And that's not being disrespectful to Villa because Villa is a huge club. But Arsenal are flying. They've got a chance of maybe finishing in the top four this season. Yeah, and, and so you watched the game between the two sides last night, didn't you, on yeah, Soccer yeah. Special? You saw him score from a, a direct yeah, from the corner. Can you see why Arsenal would have been interested? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and I think it's a positive for Aston Villa because I think the fact that Steven Gerrard came out and said, we don't want to sell him, and if we do, it's nothing to do with me sort of thing. So it, it's a good move to have him, to have that togetherness, because it's not been good at Aston Villa. The start hasn't been good. You know, Steven Gerrard being under pressure. So you want to keep all of, of those players. But, yeah, to score twice from a corner. But in fact, he did it in pre-season as well, so he scored three times from a corner. So we know he's a, a quality player. Like you say, he's probably not had the game time that he wants. Yeah. And I just think that the amount of money that Arsenal have bid mm. isn't enough for Aston Villa to, to let him go with a year left on his 
those contracts. Chris, just think about it from the Arsenal perspective. And obviously, the season started brilliantly, hasn't it? But they're starting to get a couple of injuries now. Parties yeah. missed the last couple of games. Zinchenko, who can play yeah. there, has been out as well. And then he was out last night. And of course, Odegaard went off. We're not sure how serious that is. Yeah. Are they now starting to look a little bit light in there? Well, I think, you know, we touched on that um, at the start of the season when we were speaking about Arsenal. I think, you know, 13, 14, maybe 15 players. Good, very good. Um, we'll be up there with the start of seeing the up there with anyone. But when you start to get injuries, you pick up suspensions, then you're having to change it. That's when you, you would maybe question um, Arsenal. You can understand why he's, you know, Mikel Arteta has tried to get that deal done. As you say, in and around that area, there is um, you know, some injuries there. For me, I think I mean, Ketty has come on and he, he does do well in games when he, you know, he does come on. But maybe, maybe just looking for somebody as a backup for Jesus as well. Um, because you know once Europe starts as well and you're churning the games out midweek, weekend. Um, you know, as I said, Arsenal, 1 to 11, and then 13, 14, 15 players, they're strong. But you know what I'd but say, though? That, you know what I'd say, buddy? They still, and Jules, they still got Vieira, their new sign who hasn't played. He can play, and they still got Smith Rowe on the bench, and they still got Sinchenko. So even though you think you look and you don't have party, and he's missing El Nenny, Sinchenko can go into midfield. You've seen him do that for his national team. You've got Tierney that can go to left back. So I still think they've bought quite well. But obviously getting someone like Douglas Luiz yeah. and Lukonga, who yeah. came played, in last played night played and played right. really well. So play they have well. got, they have got. But Douglas Luiz would have been a good sign. I think, the I think he's is worked under Arteta. Martinelli as well. I mean, he, oh, he's been outstanding. Oh, the, he's That's been why very Smith Rowe can't get yeah, in at the yeah. moment. But yeah. if you go back to last season, Arsenal kind of tailed off when he got injured. You know, and you're then looking at this saying, you know, I know you brought in Jesus. Martinelli could play there as well. There, there is options that, but in terms of that front three is such a, um, you know, when that starts to, um, if one or two of them get injured, you're then fearful. Well, it looks like Aston Villa have managed to resist the advances of Arsenal towards um, Luiz and Villa have also signed a new midfielder this evening as well. Let's go to Rob Jones, uh, who's covering uh, Villa for us. It's not been a great start to the season for Steven Gerrard as the rain falls in the Midlands, yeah. Rob, but is this a, a good night for him? Hello, Jules. Yeah, lovely evening here in Aston. There have been a couple of rays of sunshine for Steven Gerrard, though, today, as you've alluded to, and as Carve mentioned, that Douglas Luiz will be staying. And Aston Villa have been pretty steadfast right throughout the course of the day that Luiz was going nowhere. There's always a caveat that a guy with less than a year left on his contract would have had a magic number, but uh, Arsenal haven't hit that today, so Douglas Luiz will stay and he'll have competition for places in the midfield area because Leander Dendonk has arrived from Wolves for a fee of around £13 million. Villa were one of three clubs interested in the Belgian international who can play in midfield and in central defence throughout the course of this window. Everton a little bit earlier on and we went in today with two offers from West Ham and from Villa and it was Villa who had their bid accepted and Dendonka made the short trip from Wolverhampton to Body Heath, the club's training ground to complete his medical and then to become an Aston Villa player so he's never lost a game here he's never lost a Midlands derby at Villa Park as a Wolves player which included a winning goal for Wolves in June 2020 but now he'll be wearing claret and blue and this is what he thinks of it I'm very excited obviously um I've signed for Villa, um, new challenge for me, um, I'm really excited to be here, um, I've been shown around already here at the training ground and you can feel um, about everything that this is a big club, um, I think you can just feel it. Um, I obviously know the players as well from, from playing against them, um, I know it's, it's a, a very good team, very good players, so I'm really, I'm really happy to be here. And you're a versatile player, do you think you can help the team in a number of positions when needed? Yeah, definitely. I can play both midfield and, and defender. So, um, yeah, I will, I will help the team where, where they need me. So one down, one to go for Aston Villa. Then Leander Dendonka signed, sealed and delivered. And about three or four hours behind the process in terms of getting the deal done was Jan Bednarek. And once again, Aston Villa beating West Ham to the punch to sign the Southampton defender on loan over the course of the season. So he started his medical a little bit after Dendonka. So we would think that that deal would be announced imminently. And as much as I love the drama of deadline day, Jules, I would quite like it to get announced imminently because I'm getting quite wet here in a car park in Birmingham. <laughs>
Rob, thank you very much indeed. The one positive about that is I don't live too far from there and the lawn needed it. Um, just a bit of news to bring you um, from Memphis to Pi, um, because we were hearing earlier on uh, that maybe he might be looking to uh, find a way of engineering his way out of Barcelona. Maybe he might have ended up on these shores. But in the last couple of minutes, he has tweeted Memphis to Pi saying, I have decided to stay at Barca, fully committed to contribute to the club's sporting success. So to Pi will not be arriving in the Premier League or coming back to the Premier League this summer. Right, a reminder of the breaking news this hour. Liverpool have signed the midfielder Artem Mello on loan from Juventus. Plenty of deals yet to be completed with less than an hour to go. And I'm hearing we're going to have some breaking news for you when we come back in a couple of minutes. Uh, the deadline is racing towards us and there's news of another signing at Everton. That is the breaking news. Another midfielder, a second of the night for Alan Irwin to tell us about. Hi again, Alan. 
Yeah, it's been a good day for midfielders as far as Everton are concerned. Having uh, brought in Idrissa Garnagay, he returned to the club earlier today for a fee of around about £2 million. Everton have concluded the deal now for James Garner. It's a four-year deal for the England under-21 international. He is 21 years of age, had limited opportunities at Manchester United. He arrived here at Everton's training complex around about 4.30 this afternoon to complete the formalities, the medical, etc. And it's a done deal here. He's in and will wear the Everton jersey. As I say, it's a four-year deal. He'll be delighted to be back on Merseyside. He was born in uh, Birkenhead, just over the water, so uh, a local boy in that respect, and he's a box-to-box -box energetic midfielder who's delighted to be at the club and to get an opportunity to play, hopefully, regular Premier League football, having been on loan at Nottingham Forest for uh, around about a season and a half and very impressive there too. This is his big chance now, he feels, to uh, impress at a Premier League club and Everton have given it, him that opportunity. Frank Lampard delighted to bring him in, no doubt, and he becomes Everton's eighth signing of this transfer window. Confirmed earlier today, as I mentioned, Idrissa Garnagay. Uh, another striker, though, Highly unlikely. I think this pretty much concludes Everton's uh, dealings for this transfer window. As I say, there's not too long left for anything else to happen. The deal for uh, Ben Barrett and Diaz not going anywhere. Neil Mopé was brought in last week, of course. So Everton delighted to bring in two midfielders on transfer deadline day. Alan Owen, thank you very much indeed. Let's hear about this latest signing then with 38 minutes of the uh, window remaining from a man who knows him well, because he played with him. Michael Dawson, didn't realise he was that old Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> um, a young 21-year-old, and that's not me. Uh, <laughs> what are they getting? They're getting a, a player who likes to get on the ball, he likes to create. I, I watched James Garner when he was at Watford. He was on loan for the first part of the season. I was doing uh, watching them against Bristol City. He took every set piece. He's a player that will play the ball forward, holding midfielder, you would say. And then Nottingham Forest brought him in and I had uh, uh, just uh, half a season with him. He was brilliant. Getting on the ball, dictating everything, the main, the main play. Not a player that will get round and break things up. He can move, but he will, he will try and play the ball forward. Good signing, still only 21. So it's a good signing for Everton, it really is. I saw some comments from one of Gunnar Solskjaer from a couple of years back when he, he likened him to Michael Carrick. Can you see that Ooh, comparison? Wow. Well, to be linked to... Michael wow. Carrick, it's, uh, it shows how highly he regarded him. Yeah, he gets on the ball, sits in front of the back four, breaks things up, but he does, he plays forward. But Michael Carrick is... Uh, so he's close to He's, he's, he's big, big shoes to yeah, fill. Yeah. But <laughs> the same kind of player, as in he sits in front, plays, takes set, set pieces. Good sign, he's still only young. Yep. I thought he was magnificent for Nottingham Forest last year in helping them to, to get promoted. Do so you think he might have signed permanently for them? Yeah. Everybody else has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought him and Ryan Yates complemented each other really well. You've got a real worker in Ryan Yates and, and James Gann who wants to get on the ball. I mean, there you talk about it just yeah. a guy going in at another real workhorse who's going to get a bound and can play. But James Garner will be the guy who the sent half will look to play into, get on the half turn and try and start the, the attack for Everton. OK, so James Garner is in at Everton, £15 million, joining address at Garner Gay, two new midfielders for Frank Lampard. Now, earlier on, Jadon Sancho uh, scored the winner for Manchester United as they beat Leicester 1-0. It's three wins in a row for Eric Ten Hag's side. They're up to fifth in the table. Before kick-off, United made Brazil winger Anthony the most expensive deadline day signing in history. Uh, they paid Ajax £86 million for the 22-year-old. He signed a contract until 2027 with the option of an additional year and uh, is reunited with the United boss, Eric Tan Hag. And he's in line to make his debut against Arsenal in the Premier League on Sunday. Olha, o Eric Ten Hag é um, um treinador excelente, que eu tenho muito respeito e muito carinho, desde a minha chegada é, no Ajax, ele, ele me tratou super bem, me deu total confiança, e não foi à toa que em dois anos eu tive uma sequência muito boa com ele de jogos, e a gente criou essa confiança, essa intimidade, então... É um treinador que eu tenho muito respeito, muito carinho. Desde quando ele estava lá, eu soube da vinda dele para cá. É, desejei muita, muita sorte para ele, todo o sucesso, que é uma pessoa que merece muito. E agora, do lado dele novamente, espero é, fazer história e crescer cada vez mais junto com ele. Well, he didn't make the trip to Leicester for the game, but he was watching his new side and tweeted a photo of the game on TV with the caption, Let's go, Manchester United.
two new arrivals for the club today. They've also signed goalkeeper Martin Dubravka on loan from Newcastle. They've agreed to pay £2 million for the loan and then a further £6 million if he plays enough games to trigger a permanent transfer. How does it feel to be able to call yourself a Manchester United player? Thank you so much and uh, it's a very exciting time for me so it's a, it's a massive step in my career again and as I said I'm happy to be here. When did you become aware that the move might be on? I would say a week ago it started to be a conversation between the um, agents and, and, and the clubs and after that obviously they informed me that this is a chance to, to join them so obviously uh, I said okay let's do it and I'm here now. And um, What attracted you to this move at this stage of your career? say self you know it's massive massive club which uh, fantastic fan base um, great history right let's move from Manchester United to uh, Southampton the Arsenal midfielder Ainsley Maitland-Niles has joined them on a season-long loan we can speak to uh, James Savandra who has the details for us hi there James Hi there. Yes, the day started with two senior departures from the football club with Oriol Romeo leaving after seven years and Jack Stevens moving to Bournemouth on loan for the rest of the season. But Southampton have been busy bringing players in in the last hour or so. The first one through the door, Ainsley Maitland-Niles, a season-long loan from Arsenal. We understand there is an option for the club to buy him at the end of this season. Ralph Hassan, who's delighted with this signing. He's wanted him for a long time. He can play in a number of different positions. And Hassan, who thinks there's more for, for, for Maitland-Niles to give as well. He's got a lot of potential. But they've not stopped there, and it's incredible. They've signed four players in this transfer window from Manchester City. So the first one this evening was Samuel Adozi. He's a winger who can play on, on both flanks. 19 years old, so he joins Bazunu and Lavia already regular first-team starters at Southampton. And in the last few minutes, they've signed a left-back from Manchester City. It's Juan Larios, who was at Barcelona for a few years, came through the system there, 18 years old. It's a £6 million deal, a five-year contract, and you get the impression he could fit straight in this Southampton team. They're struggling for options at left-back at the moment. Time is ticking, but Southampton might not be done just there. They could sign their 10th player of this window. Not long to go in what has been a really successful first transfer window, first summer transfer window for the new owners here at Southampton. Yes, yeah, Southampton heading towards double figures of signings. Nottingham Forest, oh, they passed that ages ago. Uh, they've already signed 19 players, of course, during this window. And Michi Batshuayi could be about to become number 20. Let's get to Kirsty Edwards, who can talk us through the deals. Good evening, Kirsty. Evening. Well, uh, of course, Nottingham Forest took 23 years to get back in the Premier League. And since they announced the signing of Willy Bolly at one o'clock today, it's felt like 23 years waiting for these further signings to be announced. We are still waiting for confirmation. Work still going on. These could go right to the wire. As you say, uh, a surprise name that, that cropped up earlier this evening, Michi Bashiwai uh, from Chelsea. The clubs have been in a big dialogue this evening uh, discussing this deal. Now, initially I was told perhaps a loan deal could Coming here, Perhaps now it could be a permanent deal. This is what they've been discussing. They are still hoping to get this one over the line, this deal for this uh, striker. As I say, a bit of a surprise earlier today when this one popped up, but they could still do it. The other two names in the frame today that we could well see. First of all, another uh, defender to add to Willy Bolly, Loic Bardet. This is a 22-year-old French uh, central defender expecting him to join on a season-long loan from Rennes. And then we've got a player who Steve Cooper has um, had his eye on for a little while. He tried to sign him in January. Uh, he's a Blackpool winger, Josh Bowler. Now, uh, we're expecting that if he does sign here, which they're hoping he will do before uh, the deadline, that he'll then go out uh, immediately on loan to Olympiacos. So he's a player that, uh, as I say, Steve Cooper really keen on, but perhaps seeing as one for the future. So, yeah, deal number 19 confirmed earlier today with Willie Bolly signing. We could well see three more before the deadline. And then, of course, we've still got Serge Aurier, who could uh, sign. He's a free agent, so could sign after the deadline. So a very busy summer for Nottingham Forest and a very busy deadline day two.
Kirsty, great stuff. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, so, in the last few minutes, we've been from uh, Nottingham, we've been on Merseyside, we've been in Southampton. Next, we're going to go a little closer to home where uh, we are here in the studio. Actually, just down a set of stairs and a longer corridor to Bella. What's happening, Bella? <laughs> uh, that's correct. We're in the basement here with the transfer trio. Right, Carve. Dan James, you've got an update. Uh, yes, Dan James has passed his Fulham medical, so he will be moving on loan from Leeds United to Fulham. We're being told that the paperwork is just being completed now. Uh, there was a lot of interest in Dan James. Spurs, for instance, uh, contacted Leeds, I think, at the end of last season about trying to take him on loan. The main thing for him is he wants to be playing regularly because the World Cup is coming uh, up for Wales. So he has passed his Fulham medical, and that will be announced soon. OK, Melissa, um, Artur, you've got an update on that? Yes, Juventus have put out official communication on this with fees. They say there's a 4.5 million euro consideration fee and then for the loan deal. Mm -hmm. And then that Liverpool have the right to acquire the players' registration rights for 37.5 million euros, which would be payable in two years. So Liverpool with an option there to okay. buy. You got anything for us, Doms? <sighs> well, there could be a big late twist in the... We Bamba, love a late twist. ...in the Bamba Dieng soap opera. And it is that. We, do, we, do, we know what's happened throughout the day. Yeah. He was supposed to go to Leeds, had a change of heart, went to Nice instead... Uh, went to Nice for a medical. Now, there are reports emanating from France, which are being picked up here now. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it to find out whether it's true or not. And that is that Bamba Dieng may have failed his medical at Nice. So, after all that, if that deal doesn't happen now, there's a chance that he might not get a move at all on deadline day. I'm just trying to find out whether okay. he has, in fact, failed his medical or not. You've sent a lot not. of WhatsApps yeah, there and this, you've had nothing back. Yeah, so I, I hopefully get that quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you will get a reply on Bamba Dieng ASAP. Yeah. Right, Jules, we're going to update you on that, but back to you for now. Thank you very much indeed, Bader and the team there. Uh, less than 30 minutes to go now until the deadline shuts. Uh, we are still waiting to hear if Chelsea have completed the signing of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, one of the big deals we're waiting for. This was him earlier, arriving for his medical in central London. His miners didn't want you to get a look at him, but we did. Our cameras and Gary Cottrell were there. Gary caught a few words with them as well. Said he's looking forward to reuniting with Thomas Tuchel. But will they get that deal done? Time is running out. There's no news yet. When there is, you'll hear it here.
Welcome back. 24 minutes to go in the transfer window. Chelsea are racing to try and sign Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang from Barcelona before the 11 o'clock deadline. Will they do it? Michael Bridge is at Stamford Bridge for us. Michael, what's the latest? Hi, Jules. Yes, as you saw, my colleague Gary Cottle there having a quick word with him earlier, ahead of his medical call, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. We're nearly in don't-go-to-bed territory, but a few little bits to sort out. Then I'm expecting the official confirmation that Thomas Tuchel has got his out-and-out -out striker and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang returns to London. This time it's West London and not North London. So stay on Sky Sports News. We'll let you know first when we get the confirmation that Aubameyang is a Chelsea player and Thomas Tuchel finally gets the striker he wants. But it could be a double deadline day delight for Chelsea because, of course, we've said all day that Thomas Tuchel wanted a midfielder and they're close to getting it because Denis Sicaria has just finished his medical. He's on a season-long loan from Juventus with an option to buy at the end of the season. He's only featured 11 times for Juve, but he had a good spell at Borussia Mönchengladbach and he looks like a good cover option in that central midfield. He's got a good tackle, pacey, his work rate's fantastic as well. And Thomas Tuchel said as well, he said after the Southampton game, he needs more bodies. So stay with us as we get ready to announce two new signings at the bridge. Michael, thank you very much indeed. Bridgie, I hope that suit is waterproof. <laughs> it's absolutely roasting in here, friend. <laughs> 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 no words, no words needed. Well done, Michael. Well done. Uh, right, the deadline is, well, we're racing towards it, 22 minutes to go. Let's get back to Bella. We've got more news. Bella. Yeah, thanks very much, Jules. Carvey, you've got an update for us on Billy Gilmore. Uh, yes, I feel like a medical correspondent uh, <laughs> reporting on all these <laughs> medicals, but it's good news. Uh, Billy Gilmore, I'm being told, has passed his Brighton medical. Uh, that means he will complete his £10 million permanent transfer from Chelsea. That is also good news for Rangers because I believe they've got a 20% sell-on clause on the profit. I'm not exactly sure how much that will be, but they will be getting uh, some money from the deal. Obviously, uh, Billy Gilmore has been on loan to Norwich as well. This time it's a permanent move because Brighton have already got a player on loan from Chelsea, Levi Colwell. So we've seen a lot of business this summer between uh, Chelsea and Brighton. Another deal that's going to be announced pretty soon. Billy Gilmore will be a Brighton player. OK. Uh, anyone reply to your WhatsApps yet? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'm actually being serious. No. Um, <laughs> so it's conflicting reports still because one source is saying to us that, in fact, he hasn't failed his medical. But there are a lot of reports coming out of France saying that Bamba Dieng has, in fact, failed his medical. As soon as I get okay. this response from this guy... We'll get it. Hopefully. All right, Jules. Hopefully not too long. We'll be back to you shortly. Thanks very much, Bella. And uh, let's just remind you of the uh, breaking news in the last 30 minutes. Liverpool announcing Arta Mello has joined them on a season-long loan from Juventus. This was the way they did so. No option to buy. Uh, sorry, no obligation to buy. There is the option that Melissa was telling us about earlier for 37.5 million euros if Liverpool decide to take up that option, 4.5 million euro fee. And, and on, on Artemelo, um, Michael, he plays in the same Brazil team as Fabinho. Might that have been a, a key factor in Klopp's thinking? I think the key factor would have been injuries to Thiago. You see Henderson going off uh, last night, so I think you need cover in that position. James Milner's not getting any younger the career he's had. Yeah. I just think you need cover. So the connection with the Brazil, yes, I see that. But I think it will be down to the injuries that occurred with Thiago that you can pick up. Champions League football, lots of games. You need to be competitive. So he needed that. He needed cover in that position. Or at the moment in time, going to be playing. Yeah, I mean, adding him to the signings of Darwin Nunez much earlier in the summer, Fabio Carvalho saw the winner last night. So, I mean, where are Liverpool now in terms of competing against Manchester City? We've seen what they've done and the impact of Haaland. Where are they with this squad that they've assembled now? Man City just look phenomenal, don't they? But I think you look back to not even that long ago, we were talking about Liverpool doing the quadruple with the squad that they've got. Yes, they've had a lot of injuries and, and you know, injuries to some of the, the sort of key players. But to add in Carvalho, I think, is a great 
great young talent. You know, watched him a lot in the championship. Yes, it's a big step up going to Liverpool. We saw the impact that he, he made um, last night against Newcastle. Nunez, again, we know the qualities that, that he's got. still got a lot to learn, but I'm sure he's going to bring quality to that side. I think a lot of Liverpool fans were disappointed to see Mane go. Um, top quality player, as, as we all know. He scored important goals. He's, he's been key to Liverpool for a good number of years. But I, I just think that Manchester City at the moment just look up there, but I don't think we can forget how close Liverpool were to the quadruple mm. last season. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just touching it, but for me, losing Manny is, was a disaster for Liverpool. And I know they might say they wants to, he wanted to go and, and stuff like that, but you know, I just think when you've got people like that, you've got to do your best to keep them. And by the way, they might have done that and he might have wanted to move on, but you know, the numbers that Sadio Mane um, racked up at Liverpool were unbelievable. And you know, it's not just it's not just the goals he scored. I think he was a real team player. You know, even if it wasn't, if he was still creating, he was still working. And I think there's maybe one thing. You know, Liverpool, the intensity doesn't seem to be there in the play, and that was one thing that Sadio Mane brought today. You know, one pressing, but two prepared to run in behind without the ball. Um, he's closing down. You know, he's a he's going to be he's a big big miss, one. big miss. Jota being out the team as well. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. We talked about when he came in. Firmino's come back in and done well. Been magnificent. Yeah, yeah. You see goals at the weekend. Yeah. Goal last night. He's brilliant for them. Yeah. But you, you lose what Jota has. You lose Mane. Yeah. And I believe Liverpool will play into the levels. Were there? They were the t only team that could get Let's close. Let's put Clinton on the spot. Would you have sold Salah ahead of Mane? Well, I sold him. I wouldn't have sold none of them. I keep both of them. But Look, if, you, if one of them had to go, well, I'm not going to sell any of them because I'm. I'm you're, the you're a right good fund. No, right? you know why? <laughs> you know why? I'm the chairman. and I've got money. I keep both of them, so oh, I keep right, both okay. of them. I don't sell Sadio Mane, but Darwin Nunes will be a good signing. Firmino's good, and I think they got Diaz. Diaz is a, is a, yeah, is a yeah, hell yeah, of yeah, a player. Yeah. Everyone talks about Liverpool, and yeah, yesterday I think it's a huge result. I think that'd be a big turning point in their season because if they had only drawn that or even lost that game. City would have been ahead this early on in the season and we all said it last season they were miles ahead and Liverpool can close the gap I think it's a big result for them and the, that, the addition of Arthur in that is a, all their injured players will come yeah. back Liverpool will be fine this season but Hang on, on Mane you're the chairman then Chairman Clinton <laughs> <laughs> he comes to you and says Mr Morrison I want to go well, I want then to if go it, you can't keep me out I want to well, go Well then that, you have to let him go because you obviously he yeah because if his contract's running out and he comes to me and says he wants to go then Sadio Mane has to go he's given me so many brilliant years at um, Liverpool and he's been fantastic he goes to Bayern Munich fair play to him I've got other players I bring in Nunes I've got Luis Diaz I've still got Salah I've got Firmino I've got Jota I've got a lot of attacking options so yeah I let him go but in my world my chairman world with my chairman head on I keep everyone because Sadio Mane is outstanding but that's why I'm elite <laughs> Oh, what a thought, Quinn by the way. Morrison, the chairman of Liverpool. What was, in, what was in that coffee you just had? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Listen, God. we miss Sadio Mane. He's a top player, yeah. but we can't keep talking about him. Liverpool have brought excellent players in. Yeah. It's time to move on. He's a top player. They do miss him, but they've got exciting young players in that squad. And it is time to move on for us as well, because we have 16 <laughs> minutes to go till the deadline. I want to focus on Everton, surprisingly. Uh, two new midfielders in tonight. James Garner uh, joined from Manchester United. We broke that earlier on. Uh, Drissa garner Gay back to the club as well. He's rejoined from PSG for an undisclosed fee. Uh, the midfielder has returned to Goodison Park on a two-year contract. Of course, he spent three years at the club between 2016 and 2019. Not better feeling than uh, coming back home, seeing, seeing my some brothers here. And I'm very happy to, to be here to help and to, to, to work hard and to give my soul for, for this team. We know there was lots of interest in you from clubs around Europe. Why was coming back to Everton so important to you? I feel like like home, and uh, I know everybody here. And seeing uh, seeing this team, following this team every week, how they play. So I, like I said to you, I cannot feel better in a better place than uh, than Everton. So that's why I I chose uh, to come back here and to give uh, everything I I, I have and to give my soul to, to this team. Um, just to bring you some quotes from uh, Eric Ten Hag after Manchester United's win against Leicester uh, tonight. Ronaldo started on the bench for the third game in a row, came on uh, later on in the game. And we've been talking in the studio here about what the next few months might look like for Ronaldo. He's clearly staying at the club. Ten Hag was asked by our man Rob Dorsett uh, if Ronaldo needs to accept that he may only have a bit part 
play in United's starting eleven from here on in. And Ten Hag replied, no, with all the games to come, he will have a big part to play in the team, as will all the players. So Ten Hag insisting Ronaldo is not going to be having to make do with the space on the bench. He will be playing a big part in the Manchester United first team. Uh, the rest of the season, or certainly up to January anyway. Right, can you believe it? We have got 14 minutes left till the window shuts. Next, we're going to be live to Fulham. They are trying to get a deal done for Dan James from Leeds. With just minutes to go until the deadline closes, will they get it over the line as Fulham have signed Carlos Vinicius from Benfica? So one in, will James be joining him at Craven Cottage? Stay with us here on Deadline Day, the countdown to find out. Just over 10 minutes remaining of this transfer window. Let's get straight to some breaking news regarding Fulham. And we can join our reporter, Fadumo Olao, for more details. Right, we're getting into the dying moments of this deadline day. Um, Carlos Benici has signed with Fulham um, for the next year. It's a very excited deal for them. The 27-year-old Brazilian international has obviously played at Tottenham before, is familiar with London and will be a very exciting addition for the Fulham squads. And I'm sure fans are looking forward to it. 
Thank you very much indeed to you, Fadumo, on what's happening at Fulham. Yeah, uh, Carlos Vinicius is in. Will Dan James uh, join him? We'll find out very, very shortly indeed. In the meantime, let's get back to Bella. OK, we've got nine minutes to go. Darmesh, what is happening with Bamba Dieng? What a day he's had. <laughs> he started off at the Nice, nice what a day Airport. you've had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell us, started, tell us. started off at Nice Airport. And it was on his way to Leeds Bradford International Airport. A deal had been agreed with Leeds, with Marseille, in excess of £10 million. As about to board that plane, he had a change of heart and an offer came in from Nice. So then he went off to Nice to do a medical. And, unfortunately, there is a problem with that medical. He failed part of that medical. One... Liner that's just been texted to me now is there is a problem but might not be a deal breaker. I don't know whether we've got another twist to this, but <coughs> by the looks of it, the medical hasn't been passed and it looks like the deal is off. But the person I'm speaking to, I think, retains a little bit of hope okay. that maybe, just maybe, the deal can still be resurrected. But it sounds like it's looking very, very dodgy now. OK, right. Dr. Carve's got another line for us, our medical correspondent. Yeah, medical correspondent. Uh, I keep bringing you good news from these medicals. <laughs> Duja Coletta Carr, I'm being told, has passed his Southampton medical. So he will be a Southampton player soon. €10 million Euro permanent transfer from Marseille. Very highly rated centre-back. Uh, we've talked about him a lot in previous transfer windows. He was quite close to moving to West Ham a few windows ago. He is going to be a Southampton player very, very soon. OK, did you have one more quick line? Yeah, Hector Bellerin. Yes. We know that he terminated his contract mutually with Arsenal. He was into the final year of that deal. He became a free agent. would make it easier for him to get his preference to a, for a return to Spain. He was at Real Betis last season. We thought that that might be one of the options. Atletico Madrid was another option. But it seems that it is a done deal now with Barcelona on a one-year contract. Uh, Arsenal, when they terminated that contract, have got a sell-on. We think it's around 25% on any future sales if he was to leave Barcelona and join someone else. But Hector Bellerin looks like he's a Barcelona player. Right, OK. Seven minutes to go. Well done, you three. You have had a long month. You've worked very hard indeed. None of you even making eye contact while I'm praising you. Take a good break. OK, Jules, back to you. Thank you, Bally. Yes, they've had their finger on the pulse, that is for sure. It turns out we've got a couple of breaking stories from these two reporters as well. What have you got, Clinton? Yeah, the arms, can't be, <laughs> <laughs> I can do a lot. I can do quite a lot as well. Uh, now, nah, Josh Bowler is done. Yeah, he's done. Signed for Nottingham Forest. Why should we believe And then he's going on loan to Olympia. So believe me, because this face that never lies. <laughs> and I've got this magic phone, and this phone never tells... It always tells the truth. There OK, uh, Josh Bowler has been confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't come to me, Jules. Don't come to me. No, I don't come to me. Um, OK, I thought you might have something for us as well, Michael. But no, okay. I'll tell you what you can give us, though, is your opinion on, on Dan James to Fulham. It's not done yet, but what do you make of that? Surprised. Very surprised that Leeds are letting him go to, to Fulham. I look and think the players that Leeds have brought in, yes. Played four games, started two. I'm looking thinking... What, what's the reason behind this? Surely Fulham are going to be a team that you're looking to, yeah. to compete against, to stay in the league. Where are they looking at? Whether it's finances, I don't know. I'd like to know the reasons behind this because playing-wise, he's, he's come on. He, he's got pace. The way Jesse Marsh plays with his attacking team, that they're, they're energetic, they're quick. I'm surprised with that deal that, that Leeds are letting him go. Good deal for Fulham, though. Very good deal. Yeah, I like Dan James. Oh, whether, another one. Whether he's going to start, whether he's going to come, off the, come off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm surprised at that one. Mm. I, I am. You look at Fulham then. I mean, Dan Jones, they're trying to get done. Carlos Vinicius from Benfica. He was at Spurs, mm. wasn't he, for, for a season. He's in. They've signed Levin Kazawa, the uh, PSG player on loan. Willian's come, come in on a free. They've done deals before that. Um, how have Fulham done in this window, Chris, back in the Premier League? Well, I think they'll be more than uh, happy with it. You know, the, the big thing for me would be that, you know, the, 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 not the criticism, but the big question for, for Fulham was, can Mitrovic do it in the top league? Yeah. Mm. If you get players around him to create the opportunities, he can do it, he can score goals. He's already shown that. Um, you're going to have to you're going to have to strengthen. Fulham's done that after, you know, being able to... <laughs> 
you know, when, you, when you're coming out of that championship and you've done so well and you know you're coming up, you can get your business done early. And that's where Fulham have had the advantage. Um, they knew they were up a long time before anybody else. They could go and get the signings in the doors. It does help. And um, you've got to look at it. They've got most of the business done, where the other ones that came up are scrambling around trying to get some stuff done themselves. I'm just hearing, I don't think the transfer trio are happy with Clinton treading on their toes. <laughs> and on their territory. I'm going to go back to Bella. That is exactly right. Carbet, you've got time for a very quick update. Clinton's making it like it's exclusive. We'll be talking about Josh Bowler to Farrah Lee in about two months. Right, uh, now, on. very quickly, uh, we told you Billy Gilmore is moving to Brighton from Chelsea. That means Brighton, I think, may let one of their midfielders go. We're being told that West Brom trying to sign the Columbia International Stephen Alzate from Brighton on loan. West Brom in for him on loan. OK, nice and succinct, just how I like it. Well done. OK, Jules, I think we really are done now. <laughs> OK, thanks so much, Bella. <laughs> relax, Cavi, um, relax. What <laughs> 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 about <a> fun? <laughs> Clinton wanted to point out it's the fact it's done. That was the experience. Um, <laughs> Billy Gilmore, Chelsea to Brighton. Obviously, they've lost a couple of players. It hasn't harmed Brighton. They're still going so well in the yeah. Premier League. Billy Gilmore, what about him? I think it's a good move for him. It's an opportunity to go and kickstart his career. Um, for whatever reason, I don't think Norwich was the right move from last year. They were always going to be struggling. You're now seeing Billy Gilmer get into a team. Um, you know, he's, he's not going to go straight into that, for sure, because of the, the form that, that Brighton have shown. But he'll go in there. Um, the manager, Graham Potter, has done really well. Um, as I said, it's an opportunity to kickstart his career. I'm surprised Brighton have not went and got another striker or less <laughs> there's something happening now because you know, you've know you lost Mopey. Um, they played without Welbeck. They left him at the start on 11 last night as well. You'd feel as if maybe another striker there. Um, so I'm sure Brighton fans will maybe be looking for another striker to come in. But Billy Gilmer's a, an excellent addition for them and someone who I think will suit into that style of play. We know how good um, Brighton's recruitment has been over the years. That will continue to be the case. And... Um, you know, again, looking at Brighton, keeping a hold of uh, Casado, and that is because he was linked with moves away as well. There's, you know, it's been an impressive window for for Brighton once again, and it just shows you the work that goes on down there. They should be extremely, extremely proud of it. Uh, we've talked about the teams that have come up um, tonight. We talked about Forest. We talked about Fulham. We've got about 30 seconds or so, so you just have a quick word about Bournemouth. I know we touched it on on Soccer Special last night. Jack Stevens is coming today, but it's pretty quiet. We know they're going for this sustainable approach. Are you worried for them? I am a little bit worried, obviously, with the manager going as well. And it, it's just, you know, he went, obviously, come out and was quite honest in terms of wanting more players, wanting more bodies, wanting more competition for places. So, yeah, I think it's a good sign in who they brought in. I think he's going to be a leader. It's what, what they need. But it was a positive result to get a draw after the hammer into to Liverpool. It was positive not to concede and to, to just make sure that you can start building from that and trying to build a little bit of, of confidence. But yeah, I, I am a little bit worried. Uh, so, uh, let's just uh, remind you where we are at the moment. The deadline is nearly upon us. Fulham, uh, we're waiting for confirmation from them regarding Daniel James. Has he signed? As soon as we know, we will let you know. And you can see that breaking news in the last few minutes that uh, Aston Villa have signed Jan Bednarek from Southampton on loan. Earlier today, it looked like he might be going to West Ham. But uh, that didn't happen, and instead he's uh, headed up to the Midlands. And Aston Villa, who of course signed uh, Leandro Dendonka earlier on this evening, have now signed the defender Jan Bednarek. He's left Southampton and joined Aston Villa on loan. So, here we are. We've reached September the 1st, after what's been a hot, dry summer that rained transfers. A window awash with strikers making big money moves. Nunes and Isak, Jesus, Skamaka, Richarlison... Uh, it turned out Lukaku wasn't the missing piece of Chelsea's jigsaw. Maybe a Bamiyang will be if they get him over the line. Sagas, yeah, we've had a few. Anthony and Eric finally reunited at United. De Jong went on so long but went nowhere. Fofana got his move. Ronaldo didn't. Goats don't always get their own way. Uh, a new owner, but same spending power at Chelsea, who saw the value in Sterling, while Nottingham Forest splashed the cash. A deluge of new faces, 19 on the last count. I may have missed one. Down the road in Leicester, drought. Uh, Everton kept Gordon and added Garner, Garner and Anana. And the much-hyped Haaland had the pick of Europe's elite. He chose to follow in his father's footsteps. The early signs are he'll do all right. It's been a summer where we've had our windows flung wide open. It's time for this one to shut.
Very good, Jules. Thank you. Very Thank you. good. Window is closed. It's all done. Although, of course, as we know, in every window, it's not quite done, is it? Because deals can still come through, and there are some big deals we are still waiting on. Remember, if they get those deal sheets into the Premier League before the 11 o'clock deadline, the paperwork and everything can still be completed afterwards. So don't go anywhere, because although we've brought you a number of deals tonight, there are more still to happen. I'm thinking Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. He was a big story in January on the final day. He's one of our headline stories tonight. Is he going to Chelsea on loan? He's been having his medical. We've brought you the pictures of him arriving in London. The former Arsenal captain is going to be signing for Chelsea. Two-year deal with the option of another. Uh, the 33-year-old, there he was earlier, speaking to our man Gary Cottrell when he arrived in London earlier this evening. We still have not had confirmation that that has been done yet. We've not had confirmation either that Dan James is making that move from Leeds to Fulham. That's another one we are waiting on. And we're also waiting on, among others, Michi Batshuayi. Is he going to be signing number 20 of the summer for Nottingham Forest? Uh, the uh, Chelsea striker was at Palace a couple of years ago on loan, wasn't he? Is he going to be heading off to Forest to add to the competition for places for uh, Steve Cooper? Those are some of the deals, and there are more that we are waiting for here on Sky Sports News. But the window is officially shut. So, guys, let's have a chat with our, our guests here. They've been with us all evening. Michael Dawson, Sue Smith, Chris Boyd and, and, and Clinton Morrison. <laughs> Aubameyang, you know, he's always headline news, isn't he, Michael? could well be one of the big headlines tonight too. Yeah, and I think it would be a good signing for Chelsea. I really, really do. And look, he left Arsenal on bad terms. Mikel Arteta made, made his stance. And rightly so. If you've got a disciplinary, <coughs> you stick to your guns. No problem with that. Went to Barcelona. I just think coming back to Chelsea with a connection with Thomas Tuchel, I think it's, it's a short-term gap. It's not long-term. We know that. I thought when they brought Lukaku... It, in a year ago, just under 100 million, this was going to be the answer. That wasn't the answer. They needed a number nine, or yep. need a number nine with Aubameyang looking like it's going to happen. I think Sterling, Ziyech, Havertz, you need the number nine. None of them are a number nine. So I think him coming in for me, Aubameyang owes Thomas Tuchel, chance to come back to the Premier League. For me, the best league in the world. He's going to have to look to repay him. And I think because of the... the can togetherness, the connection they had at yeah. Dortmund yeah. I think it's a good sign. How, how important is that relationship between those two? Give us your perspective as a player, a, a manager who maybe just got you and understood you and, and you got your best out of you. Yeah, I think Harry Redknapp was, was that manager for me I went through a period under one day Ramos, like a lot of other players, were lacking confidence and Harry came through the door. We had two points from eight games Modric, Bale, Keane Defoe, Berbatov the forward there was, it must have been defenders that were struggling. Probably was. Yeah, well, I was. I was anyway. Uh, that's why I was out the team. That's why like, when managers go out the door, you're like, I've got a new, new lease of life. And that's what Harry did for me and, and the rest of the players. And I think, I do believe Thomas Tuchel and Aubameyang, that is the reason it's happening. Had he not been there, I don't believe that deal would have happened. Mm. Uh, of course, the thing is, you know, he's not going to play for a few weeks, isn't he? Because he had this awful uh, attack at, at his home as broken his jaw in, in places and, and I think we're talking a few weeks before he comes back into first team not to see until the end of October what do they do in the meantime then Clinton? To stick with what they've got Sterling scoring goals other players have to step up Kai Havertz is not in the form that he had last season he needs to start producing Mason Mount he can add goals they've kept Ziyech there was a lot of talk Ziyech could go um, to Ajax he needs to start producing Pulisic they've got enough good attacking players Chelsea have you know I agree with Dawes I think getting Aubameyang stay in the box you have to realise Aubameyang two or three seasons ago the goals he was scoring mm -hmm. at Arsenal he can finish he definitely can finish. He had obviously something's happened with him and Arteta and then he moved on. But at the end of the day, he's a special talent. He'll go in there and you Boydie will tell you, strikers, we like to be loved. We like to be loved more than anyone else. Uh, do you mean you're needy? Yeah, it? we are very needy <laughs> and we need that arm around the shoulder and telling us how good we are. Speak for yourself, I think, Well, then you're different, but <laughs> most strikers do need that, to be fair. And I, I think, can confirm he is very <laughs> <laughs> The combination between Tuchel and Aubameyang will work, but they've got Sterling, who, for me, has been an outstanding signing for them. But they've got goals in that team, but if that deal gets over the line, it's a good signing. Yeah. If that gets over the line, um, we know that um, Zakaria, the midfielder on loan from Juventus, is over the line. We know that Koulibaly is in, Kukurea is in, Sterling's in. They've lost a couple of games. It's been a stuttering start, Chris. Tuchel's been backed, £250 million yeah. of support. How much pressure is he now under to deliver? Not any more than he was beforehand because, you know, as the Chelsea manager, we've seen it in the past. I know the owner has um, you know, changed hands now, but the ownership... 
But when you're managing big clubs, you're always going to be under pressure. The scrutiny's there. Yes, there's a little bit added when, um, as you say, you go and spend that type of money. But if this, do- if this, if this deal doesn't um, get done, you're then looking at it saying, there's a lot of... Ben Chilwell was there. You've signed Cucurella for that amount of money. You've got centre-backs there. And Fafana's in now as well. Um, the midfield area... Chelsea have got so many players in there. You've seen Billy Gilmer was, was speaking of um, Gallagher as well in there. Yeah. He's been given an opportunity the last few games as well. But you know when you look at Chelsea's, they, they seem to be strong in every other department. The the one they needed was that um, you know central striker role. Still not done. Um, but if they don't, you've got to be looking at, you know, in question. Um, Chelsea's recruitment if they don't get this Obama Yang deal over the line because they've known from the start of summer Lukaku went yeah. you had to get a striker in um, they're going to have to make sure this deal gets done mm. or Clinton's getting the boots back on because he's a free <laughs> transfer yeah, I'd you know what I mean yeah. friend well yeah stay in the six yard box <laughs> yeah, great I don't, see you I don't, I don't have games. to run on, just tap it in <laughs> Nah, them days are long gone, mate. Forget that. <laughs> you think back to last year, you actually forget that Chelsea were, were top going to December, weren't they? Uh, obviously, we know it was, then it was all about Liverpool and, Ma- and Manchester City. With this investment, with these players brought in, and, and you know, there's clearly the financial support and the might still at Chelsea that there was in the previous era, where should Chelsea be this season? Should they, do they have to be title contenders? They'll certainly be looking at, at top four at, at the, the minimum. Um, and, and you're right. I think when Lukaku came in last season, we all said that was going to be the missing piece of the jigsaw. Chelsea were creating so many opportunities. And I think what what hindered them was when Rhys James and Chilwell both got injured because they were playing so well and, yeah. and they were so creative. So I think when those two went out, that was a loss for, for Chelsea. So I think the players that they brought in, yes, good players. I think the Aubameyang deal definitely needs to get over the line because that's the, the area that they, they needed to improve. They needed that midfielder because you looked Kante out injured. I think Kovacic is, is coming back. So to add an, a, another midfielder in there is important. But it's the rebuild, isn't it? I think when you're rebuilding a side, there's going to be hiccups along the, the way. And, and I think that's what we've seen so far. So I think once they, they get gelled, they, that consistency then will, will come back. But top four has to be a minimum. Oh, definitely. That Sakari's good, though, Jules. I've seen him. He better not let me down because I, I, <laughs> I've got high hopes for him. I think he's a good midfielder. He's aggressive in the tackle. He wins his possession and he can play. He plays it simple. He lets he goes and breaks up attacks and lets the players in front. I think Chelsea fans will like him. I like him. I've watched a lot of him. I think he'll be a good signing. Please don't let me down. Let me get something right, Sakari. Go and produce your best football, please. <laughs> I've talked about the names they've brought in and you know, the, the finances they've, they've spent, but it was interesting seeing comments from Gary Neville yesterday and I think I think before about Todd Bowley and, and the approach in the market from Chelsea for this summer. Calling him Todd Woodward, uh, you know, a cheeky dig at uh, Ed Woodward at Manchester United, and, and saying that he was playing like football manager and like a kid in a sweet shop, Chris. I mean, has it been a sort of scattergun transfer approach from Chelsea for you? Yeah, uh, as a, if, I'll, I'll go back to it. If they do not get the Bamiyang deal done, it's you know it ain't a good window, and I don't care what MD say. The, the problem that Chelsea had going into this window was they needed a striker. Timo Werner's left as well. There's another one who's um, you know who could play through there. Um, they have to get this deal done, um, and that's why you know. And I know people will turn around. And they might look at a Young in terms of 33 when you're trying to rebuild. It might not be. But there's not really any, any other players out there where you would say that I'm going to go and build a team around. I mean, as you said, we touched on Lukaku was the, the, the person where everybody thought you know he's going to be um, the one to, to solve that number nine striking role for, for Chelsea. But you can get the feeling the way that Thomas Tuchel plays, Aubameyang suits that because he's prepared to run channels. Mm. He, and then you know you, whoever plays in the wide areas will come in um, as you know the, the wingers coming in, in behind the, the full-backs, uh, sorry, in behind the centre-backs and that for there, but it's important that the, wing, uh, the striker then um, leaves that space for them to work in. Lukaku wasn't that type. Aubameyang's more of a Thomas Tuchel type player, um, and if they can get it done, I think he will be a good signing, albeit short-term, but that's what they need at this moment in time, because for Tuchel, he's not going to be there long-term, let's be realistic. Um, Chelsea don't keep their managers very long, do they? That's just history tells us that. Um, so the most important thing for them is we touched on top four, but if the owner's spending that type of money, he will be expecting to challenge Chelsea, uh, sorry, Manchester City and Liverpool at the top of the table. Uh, more from Chris, from Sue, from Michael and from Clinton um, very shortly. But we are getting news of deals all the time, even though the window is officially shut. Let's rejoin Bella. Thanks, Jules White. Carver, you've got three updates for us. Yes, look, the window has closed and a few deals haven't been announced yet. But 
nothing to worry about. Uh, we're being told they will be announced soon. The first one, uh, Dan James uh, leads to Fulham. He's passed his medical. That will be announced soon. Second one, Billy Gilmore, uh, Chelsea to Brighton. Permanent move, £10 million. He's passed his medical. That will be announced soon. And Duje Coletta Carr, we told you about 40 minutes ago that he passed his medical. Southampton have announced that they have signed him. Now, I don't even know what where to start with you, Damesh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something um, to do with a joker and what is going on? Bamba so, so, it's been confirmed to me that he has failed his medical problem with his knee. Now, that should realistically be the end of that deal of uh, Bamba Dieng going from Marseille to Nice. However, the contact I'm speaking to says there is still a possibility that it can be resurrected tomorrow, believe it or not, because in France they have what's called a wild card or a joker signing. And I'll tell you <laughs> what... <laughs> you can't make it up. You can't make this up. And what it means is it turns out that league earned clubs are allowed to sign one more player after the summer window closes and before the winter one opens. The only stipulation is that the player signed has to be from another French club. And this deal is being done between two French clubs. I'm not saying that this is going to happen before the win chance. winter window opens, but I've asked the question... Can this deal be resurrected? The answer I got was yes, because of this ruling that they have in the French transfer window. So we'll all come back here tomorrow and carry on the Bamba Dieng soap opera. Did he send a clown emoji? This Joker deal is unbelievable. Yeah, he did send me a clown emoji, but, but that as, wasn't anything to do uh, with it. As far me. as Leeds, Leeds are concerned, <laughs> uh, a couple, of, uh, a couple a of hours one. ago, people were making fun of Leeds. Uh, you know, joking that they'd missed out on this guy who'd had a change of heart. He was about to get on a plane to Leeds. He decided, no, 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 I'm going to go to Nice instead. Leeds, uh, people at Leeds and Leeds supporters must be loving this because they're thinking, thank God yeah. we didn't sign him. Thank I, I've God got a bit of extra a information of on this, actually, because okay. it was thought because of the lateness of that deal and when he was going to fly in, that Leeds United were a little bit worried that they wouldn't be able to do a full medical on Bamba Dieng. And so they were pushing to try and get Bamba Dieng to reach there earlier. And then there was a suspicion that from the Bamba Dieng side and mm. his representative side that maybe, oh, actually, look, we're not going to be able to get there as quickly as you want. So another factor why the Nice one started to materialise. So <laughs> look, look, this one's going to go so through the right night. Earlier. This Didn't one's going through the night. Trip. <laughs> it's the best story of the window so far. Oh, OK, Jules, come back to us in a little bit. Will do, Bella. Thank you very much indeed. I like the idea of that Joker wild card. Imagine that Premier League clubs being able to play one of those between windows. Might we catch on? Um, it's an extra four in his fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, changed it. <laughs> um, Will cut. Just to, to see, uh, to give, to give you a little detail about that uh, story you can see that's just broken. Barcelona have re-signed Hector Bayer, and he was there earlier in his career. And uh, of course, he hasn't been playing at Arsenal for the last couple of seasons. He is now uh, once again a Barcelona player. That deal is done. Uh, now let's just um, focus on Manchester United and Leicester because in the Premier League tonight Jadon Sancho scored the winner for United as they won 1-0 at the King Power Stadium that is a third win in a row now for Eric Ten